my people my people what's going on what's up what's up good morning guys i'm running quite late 30 minutes late i'm sorry about that it's been a it's been an unpredictable evening but i'm finally here and i'm happy to be here so how are you doing how are you guys doing in one word let me know how you're doing this morning how are you feeling how are you feeling in general? Or how are you feeling about the exam? Or how are you feeling about the session? Just tell me what's going through your mind right now in a word. Because this is going to be a special session for you guys. So I need to know how you're doing. How are you doing? Nervous. Why are you nervous? Nervous about the, the exam, anxious, oh man, what's with these adjectives, great, yeah, I like that, I like that, great, 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 tired, tired, it's early morning for you, right, why are you, why are you already tired, great, 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 great is great, Gabby says okay, kind of in the middle, I guess, just okay. I'm a little tired too, but you know, when I when I get on stream, the tiredness kinda kinda dissipates. Thanks for asking, Ate. I'm a little tired, just a little bit, but I still have some juice. Still have some juice left. Some juice. Still have some juice. So I can manage. Yeah. I can manage for a couple of hours. It's it's our section D. It's our section D session. Uh, let, by the way, let me know if this if the stream is running well for you guys. Let me know if you're seeing everything clearly, or if I am lagging quite a bit, or if the the camera looks bad or the audio sounds bad. Just let me know what's up. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to keep track of all the variables while I'm here in the studio so let me know how everything looks and sounds so we can all be having you know a pretty good experience on the live yeah, what's up thanks for being here thanks for being here not jody so if you're not jody who are you that's the question that's my question yeah everything great yeah sounds great nice 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 yeah i noticed the last live i have I was I was speaking through the wrong mic for the whole time. Unbelievable. Only while rewatching um, did I realize that the audio wasn't as clear as it should have been. But I, I enjoyed that session very much. Were you guys present for the previous live? English B students, that is. Uh, the Animal Farm live. If you do English B, then... I'm really hoping you made it out to that live because that, that was epic. It wasn't super long, but I think we, we covered a lot, a lot of content. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the English A people, the people who are only dealing with English A, I hope you have either been to or have watched the other sessions, the other English A sessions where I've gone through sections A, B, and C. Today we're looking at section D, which is the essay writing, that's what I call it. Some teachers say persuasive slash argumentative writing. You don't do animal farm, what do you mean, Pinky? If you do English B, then you do animal farm. That's what I know. What do you mean you don't do animal farm? You mean you don't do English B? Is that what you mean? Because if you're doing English B, you should be, um, you should be, you should, you should master all of the texts actually, everything, because you don't know what questions are going to appear, and you want to give yourself as many options as possible. You want to give yourself the best chance at survival in the exam. What do you mean only Twelfth Night? But Twelfth Night is a play, and Animal Farm is a novel, so they're not even in the same section, Pinky. It's going to be Twelfth Night versus Anansi in section A. And in section B, it's going to be Leticia versus Animal Farm versus the stories. In section C, it's going to be the 20 poems. So, 
If you need to reconsider your, your, your text choice strategy, you should be you should be looking at all of the texts. This isn't an English be live, so I, can't, I won't go too much into it. Um, hopefully, Rafina, I'll be able to. Oh man, can I do more lives? Hopefully, I can I can answer this question properly, but can't touch on that in this in this live. Because we have a, a lot of a lot of persons here who don't even do English B. So I don't want to waste their time with that. Yeah, but even so, I mean you have YouTube and you have the book, so you can study anything. You can study anything. Yeah, you have to know everything. You have to know everything. All the all the texts, all, all the novels, plays, poem stories. You, you just have to know everything. Yeah. Anyway, guys, welcome. I'm 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 happy to be here again. I'm not seeing everybody, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give the late comers. Imagine I'm 30 minutes late and people are still later than I am. I'm gonna give the super late comers three more minutes to join before we start, and I have I have some special surprises for you today. Yeah, I have some special surprises for you for for this live. This is gonna be an awesome live. Yeah, it's not going to be an ordinary live at all. It's going to be quite special, quite special. So yeah, English B people, study all of the texts. You have very little time left, but you have to be familiar with all of the texts. So when you're going to the exam, you're able to choose whatever question you want to. What if you only study animal farm for section, that would be for section B, and the animal farm question is just too hard? then you have no options, right? So you don't want to put yourself at a disadvantage. Yeah, that would be a terrible idea, putting yourself at a disadvantage. Yeah, good morning, good morning. So Rosemary, are, are you a... Or Rosemary. Rosemary said, good morning, my colleagues. You could be a student saying that, but you sound teacherish. Or a teacher, Rosemary. Do we have do I have teachers in the chat? I know a few teachers um, come out to to the sessions, and I know lots of students come out to the sessions. Yeah, I have two lit essays for a whole. I mean, I I have about eight lit essay poetry essay videos on the channel, so. Guys, the content is out there. K Wama Kotl, I might I might not be saying that name correctly, but I, I figured you're a teacher. I, I can tell you now, I know the teacher energy. <laughs> I know the teacher energy. So looking at the chat, I can tell that's a teacher, you know. Yeah. And I know the teacher presence. I know that vibe. Explain the summary writing. That is my problem. Daniela Kid, answer me truthfully. Have you have you watched or been in the summary live? If not, you should not be saying summary is a problem. All right. If you have watched that live and you're still struggling, I have another summary video from last year, and CSEC Panda has summary videos as well. So the content is there. Oh, I got it right. Kewama Kotl. Wow, interesting. You have a pretty unique name, so I'm happy I, I got that. Got that. Yeah, I can. I I know the teachers, man. Just one or two comments, and I can tell whether you're a teacher. I don't know how I know, but I know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so for those asking about section A, B, and C. It's likely that you haven't been to those sessions. Um, so watch those videos. Who knows if YouTube might remove them tomorrow. Watch them as soon as possible, right? Because what I what I do in these sessions, uh, those of you who have been here, you know what's going on. Lionheart, thanks for being here. Good early morning. Uh, those of you who have been here, you know how these sessions go. We work actual past paper. I show, I show you the technique. I show you the approach. I show you an actual sample answer that I have written. Yeah, so these sessions are no joke. So if you're struggling with summary, check out the summary session. It's, it's only about two to three hours long. It's not too bad. 
in section B session is kind of rough. That's like five hours. So you might need a, a coffee or two or a few Red Bulls to get through that one. Okay. Oh, thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Uh, I, I usually get a, a couple of extra subs from lives like these. Yeah. I guess that is my payment for doing the lives. <laughs> I hope that you guys who sub to the channel because you're panicking, you know, because the exam is around the corner. I hope that after you get your grade one and move on, you still continue to support the channel. You know, stick around and, you know, reacquaint yourself with, with, with what's going on because you will never outgrow English. You will never graduate from, from literature. Yeah. And I know you guys are going to get the ones because if you're here, it means you're aiming for a grade one and you're working for a grade one. You're making the sacrifice to be here when you could be asleep or when you could be just scrolling mindlessly through your phone like the sheep in Animal Farm. But you're here. Yeah. Can you do a speech today? I'm not. I'm, I'm tackling two specific questions today, Lashon. Unfortunately, there will not be a speech today. However, the same style and format can be used for anything in Section B. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's persuasive slash argumentative writing. So how we plan and how we approach is going to be quite similar from question to question. It's not going to be much different. All right. Let's get going. We are 11 minutes in. Let me share my screen. And, and as usual, we go, we'll go through the instructions. And from there, I'll take you through a sample answer. Yeah. Uh, all right, what paper? I have two papers to deal with today. All right, let me deal with January 2020 Uh January 2020. Ajani, thanks for being here. Good morning. You see, all of these people asking me about these types of content, you know, you have not been watching my videos. Who are you asking me about paper one zero life when I have a video that is four hours and fifty minutes long that I that I spend and cover three hundred past paper questions for English A? Come on, man, watch the videos, watch the videos, people. When it comes to paper one, you should not be asking any questions. In a single video, it's called a paper one marathon. I go through three hundred questions i can't want more than that from one video 300 questions answers and explanations five hours of paper one so check that out if you're struggling with paper one yeah all right um let me share the screen and we'll we'll, we'll get the ball rolling i'll have one or two guests coming in later on so be on your best behavior students all right, let me share the screen. Uh, present, share screen. All right, bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam. Here we go. I said, here we go. The screen is not screening. Give me a moment. It seems today has decided to be a difficult day for this live. Give me a moment. Give me a moment, guys. Because everything is lagging for no particular reason. Let me get this sorted out. I don't want to waste you guys this time, you know. You guys are busy. You guys are studying. So let me fix this problem real fast. What what is going on? All right, you're seeing it, Serb Live? Yeah, so uh, be sure to give me a moment, guys. I'm, I'm starting out this, this this screen share issue. So, yeah, watch watch the paper one, the paper one marathon. 
because believe and guess what i i i i don't make um full full videos you know you see that paper one um marathon scroll through the comment section right and you're going to see the most popular co um comment the most recurring comment is sir 75 percent of these questions came on the exam that's what everybody says everybody said that on that video sir this almost all of these questions are explained appeared on the exam because guess what csec is very rep repetitive very predictable when it comes to english a they have a small question bank and they repeat the same questions every year it's the same stuff same passages same questions in the same order so it's just a matter of um, it's just a matter of working the past papers same for english b they might switch up the questions a little bit, but the same, it's the same question type and therefore the same strategies. All right, guys, give me, uh, how long should I ask for? I'm going to take about two minutes to solve this problem here. I'm not sure what's happening. You, you just want to get over English B Friday. What are you, are you worried about any particular um, section for English B? Morning, Chavanese. I'm getting the, the, the paper already that I'm about to share. Just having a little bit of difficulty, just a little bit. From a train delay to a share screen issue. I'm pause working against this live, you know. Word about paper two. Why are you worried about paper two, Demar? What what is what is so um frightening about paper two right now? What has you worried? Paper one is easy. You think paper one is easy? Hey, hey. stay there. <laughs> Poetry not due to lack of knowledge, but it's just that I quite literally don't know what to expect. I mean, you know what to expect. You're going to get a question on, on the 20 points. <laughs> On, on some of the 20 points. So all you have to do, know the 20 points, be able to quote lines from the 20 points, easy stuff. Know, all the, know the common themes in the 20 points, easy, easy one too, yeah. Know the devices in the 20 points, easy thing. Know, know who writes each point because you need to quote or uh, mention the, its name easy so that's just 20 sets of themes 20 names to remember 20 sets of devices 20 sets of important quotations yeah just a couple of nights of studying man you can do it oh my goodness this life is trying to not happen As for the, the English BSBA, I, I, I can't answer that very accurately right now. If I think I might find the answer, but to be honest, this sheer screen thing is is messing is messing with me right now. Twelfth night is nice and unwell. Yeah, I mean, I think I think all of the texts, uh, by the way, um, yeah, I think all of the texts this year. Sorry for talking about English B so much, English A people. I'm still trying to fix a little issue here. Just making conversation in the meantime. Uh, all of the texts this time around are, are pretty good. I think they're all enjoyable. Oh, man. I think they're all, they're all pretty good. I, I don't think... All right, let, let me, for, for the English B. Oh, my gosh. This is not happening today. For the, the English B persons who are um, worried about um, particular aspects of the exam and you know finding information and certain things online 
I can I can tell you how to use my videos, right? And there, there are other channels out there that deal with English B. For my videos, the the main th well, I, I cover a lot of things. So let's start with poetry. English A people don't run away. I'm just fixing an issue and talking in the meantime. I'll get I'll get the light started soon. So I, I'll tell you how to navigate my videos. First of all, when it comes to poetry, you need to watch my 20 analysis videos. I have a main animated, you know, well put together analysis video for each poem. So that's 20 videos you need to watch. These videos are about, are about 30 minutes long, give or take a few minutes. I have one for each video. Aside from that, I have at least one discussion video for each poem. So I have one analysis video for the poem, watch that and take notes. I also have a, a, at least one discussion video where it's like a Zoom meeting, maybe amongst teachers or among students, and we just discuss, we have, a, we have some Q&A, and we talk freely about the poem. Watch those videos as well. So that's about 40 videos down. I have a video where I talk about all of the themes that run across all 20 poems. Watch that video. I have a video that deals with all of the devices across all 20 points. Watch that video. I have a video. I have a live stream that discusses the themes, one for the devices, and two live streams for tone and mood. And I also have a, this is just poetry I'm talking about. So guys, don't tell me that the videos aren't out there. I also have another uh, video that deals with, um, about 50 poetic devices that we can see in all of these poems. So the videos are out there. It's just a matter of, 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 of watching them and taking notes as you watch. And that's just poetry. For Life of Letitia, I have an entire course on that four videos recently published. For Anansi, I have a course on that five videos recently published. Not recently, um, published a, a while back. Um, what else? I have, I, I did a, 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 a chat about Animal Farm, just just, not, just now. I should do something on Twelfth Night. So I've covered almost everything in English B. And CSEC Panda has joined us. Welcome, Panda. I am here trying to solve a share screen issue. So in the meantime, would you, would you just have a chat with with um with was waiting for the live to officially start. Welcome Panda, thanks for being here. Panda, Panda, Panda. Can you speak, Panda? Are you here? Are you hearing me? Yes, I am definitely here. Can you hear me? Oh yeah. All right. Sure. Cool. Cause I just had a little bit of a last minute. You know how it is, technical difficulties. Everything was working great before and then just when you're ready to start, that's when it happens, right? Yeah. And yeah, that's that's what's happening right now as we speak because my, my uh -huh. screen should be on the screen. It's been 10 minutes and I've, I've done everything. The only thing I, I'm yet to do is to reset the internet, which is going to kill the stream. <laughs> oh, so that I hope is it a doesn't very, come to that. That's a last resort. Yeah, pan, Panda's, I don't know. I think it's a fake oh. voice. No one's voice is, is, that, is that smooth in real life. Thank I, you, I believe, thank you. I, I believe so. But you know what? It's a good thing. I actually don't have a um, webcam. This is just my gaming PC, and I don't, I don't uh, stream. Because yeah, if yeah. I had both my voice and myself on the screen, nobody would be able to focus on the lesson, and then everybody would Man. Be oh. in grade seven. And how would you explain that to your parents? <laughs> so. Oh man! All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's because of uh, the panda did it. What panda? Absolutely, that wouldn't go over. A panda All in, right. in yeah. Man. So yeah, Panda, just drop some gems and some advice while I sort out the, the little issue here. Please take take the pressure off me for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. so today we're trying to talk about um essay writing, persuasive essays, or I hear a lot of people um he's a lady. Yeah, I know this is like a big confusion on my channel, um, especially like depending on the mic or the headset I use, but I am in fact female. I know that a lot of you are like, what? But no, that's what's up. 
All right, all right. No, no, but persuasive writing um, or argumentative, as you may have heard it in school, it's a whole thing. I think it's probably one of the most um, neglected. I'm from Trinidad. Um, let's do an intro. I'm from Trinidad. Um, uh, I'm currently living in Tobago. It's beautiful over here. A lot of, uh, yeah, beaches, much more peaceful, that kind of stuff. But um, I probably like have a little bit of the accent and so on from, I, I did some American education when I was younger and just a bunch of different stuff. First I was in regular school and I was in private schools here when I was a kid. Then I did some distance learning with um, schools in the States. So that's how I actually just went back and did the CSEC exam for like these passes that they always say are so important later into life. And when I saw how much um, of that whole exam is like hype or people say it's either going to be really easy, really difficult, you either hear uh, one side or the other horror stories of people failing time after time or people somehow just find it to be easy. So that's how I kind of started the channel so that I could make it kind of easier for people coming after me or anybody who was having an unusual path or just you're in school but the teacher didn't come, etc. So that's kind of like who I am, why I do this. Um, and so I'm hoping that like the little pink on the logo and so on might help people get a bit of a clue. Also, it says on my channel bio, but yeah, I know it's a common confusion. But yes, so I hope that intro has helped everybody to kind of catch up on where we are. And well, today I'm doing a little bit of more of what I do, which is to try to explain how to do persuasive writing, because as I was saying, I think it's one of the sections that gets left for maybe last, just because it comes last on the paper, or maybe. No, paper three is um, for private candidates. You get an SBA if you're in school doing it the first time, and if you are writing privately, you get paper three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so that is Panda, yeah. And thankfully, thanks for buying me some time, Panda. It seems that's what I needed to get this this problem solved. All right, that's good be, to know. Should be up and running. And pa Panda and I have collabed in the past, but off air. So now we are finally on air, on stream, writing live. Yeah, this is how it should be done. <laughs> Yeah, so so the, the 76 viewers here, make sure that even while you're in this, the, the, the stream, you check out Panda's channel, subscribe, and, and bookmark everything. Because let me tell you, if you're talking about writing samples mm -hmm. and a smooth, chill walkthrough, you're talking Panda right there. That's Panda's language. Yeah, yeah I'm, a fan of, I'm a fan of the Panda. I like, I like good writing and I like good videos. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Let me all share. Right. Do you have to know all the prose pieces? Um, well, that's kind of English P, but mm. no, you need to know the one in particular that you chose to study so you can answer the particular question on that. Because on the paper, there's going to be a question for each one of the prose pieces. So whichever one you chose, um, that's what you need to just know about so you can answer those questions. Um, so I hope that helps. It's literally not all of them. Yeah, it's it, it's pretty tough to to master all of the text. It's a, it's a lot of texts, but I would yeah. say give your, give yourself as much coverage as you can, because you might have bad luck. You might enter the exam, and let's say you've only studied Animal Farm. You haven't even opened the other pro piece. You haven't touched on any of the short stories. What if the animal farm question is just too hard? It's that one theme that you didn't study. It's that mm -hmm. one device that you didn't look up. And so you're stuck without a plan B. Yeah. So if you want to have like a plan A text, fine. But at least have a backup where you have some general information. So you can, you can do something to get some marks. Even if you're not going to get all 35 marks, 
you can get you know 25 marks or something you know so um don't don't be comfortable knowing just one text per section because it it could be risky it, it's a it's a tall ask for you to study all the texts like even teachers can't get through all the materials in class but fortunately you have things like youtube things like google things like spark notes things like Let's chart. There are many resources out there. So even if your teacher can't manage to cover every single text in class, because it's it's pretty much impossible to so do two novels, two dramas, mm -hmm. 10 short stories and 20 poems deeply. You're not going to be doing critical analyses of that's what, 30 something texts in, in a year or even in two years. So you have to go outside of the class and seek out some of the information on your own. I mean, you're, you're in high school at the minimum. So that's what it is. G going further from here on, going to university, you know, you're, you're, you're doing your own research. So that's basically what, what is required of you when it comes to English B. For the other subjects, the teachers might be able to give you 90% of the information. For English B, the poor teacher can only manage so much. And some of some of the students aren't even reading the texts at home, which makes it even more difficult to get through in class. So use use the internet to fill those gaps, guys. Yeah. All right, English A, that's why we're here. <laughs> right. The non-English the non B people are like, what, when are they gonna start? Oh, what's, I'm, I'm wasting my time here. So let me just bring this up on screen, uh, bam. Uh, I have a few, I have two papers I want to, uh, two questions I want to work. I'm not sure how many questions Panda has. Um, I saw we do one and I thought I would just do um, both sides of the arguments. So we do it twice, but uh, we'll be able to see just how dynamic you can be. Because exactly like you said, sometimes you need a plan B. It's nice to know that you could switch it up if it was required and choose to disagree if you plan to agree or vice versa so yeah uh, yeah so do, do you want you want to go first or do you want me to run my my answer first panda um you could you probably think? run yours first um you are running the show so all right all right all right i'll run it i i usually go painstakingly slow so you can see the meaning behind every line but i try to speed up a little bit because you're used to the lives you're used to how we plan. And I want to give Panna enough time to run through her questions as well. So the paper I'm looking at here, this is January 2020. Now, some of you guys ignore the January papers. I don't know why. But some January questions might reappear on the June exams. Uh, we think we worked that summary. We worked this section B. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, Panda, didn't you work this story at some point? Um, not the picture of Mr. Matahu. I remember Isn't somebody this asked me. Recent story? No, not this one. This story actually haunts me. I think this is one of the toughest prompts, the word, not the pictures, the words. Really? Mr. Matar and that whole prompt. I think this is one of those unlucky prompts that they made too much of the story um, mm. up already, so it's hard to get mm. that to work. And somebody had asked for this one some time ago, and I never was able to complete it. Oh. So this is a moment that Plan B for me, because I normally <laughs> prefer the words, but yeah. it'd be the picture in that scenario. Mm. All right. All right. So I am. I am doing. Uh, number five here, section D. So just a very brief mm -hmm. overview of the instructions. You have 45 minutes. However, by the time you get to section D, you are exhausted and you've done three sections and you might be behind on time. So practice working section D within 35 minutes, right? Because this is where some of you are going to be um, pressed for time because the summary took too long or the story took too long. So time management is key, but if you don't manage the time well enough, this is where you're gonna be have to you're gonna have to be you know, rushing. So 45 minutes, best case scenario. Let's put it that way. 
Uh, you have 250 to 300 words. That's good news. That's not as long as your story. This is just enough to give you four slightly big paragraphs or five condensed paragraphs. That's what I find if you want to stick within the word limit. They say approximately, so going a little bit above 300 shouldn't be a big deal, but try not to go below 200. You don't want CSEC thinking uh, this person can't manage writing 250 words. It's better to write 400 than 200. So if you need to deviate from this, since they give us this nice little leeway here, uh, let's say 320 there about as your max. Yeah. Uh, they'll be grading for appropriate content. Obviously, it just means you're answering the question well. Yeah. Uh, clarity. Your sentences and your points are easy to understand and they're not ambiguous. It's clear what side you're on, that sort of thing. Your essay should be clear. Organization, this is a big deal for section D actually because your persuasive piece has to be very, very, very well organized. You have a solid introduction doing a couple of specific things. You have your points where they're doing two or three points, clearly stated a paragraph each and you have a conclusion. You use your, your um, transitional words and phrases to link points. That is your organization. Development of your argument. So you're gonna be making a single argument and you're gonna have several supporting points. Each point must develop your argument. So if point A is supporting a particular argument, point B cannot be supporting a different argument. Your argument isn't being developed like that. So ensure that each point you come up with, and we're going to do this from the planning section, each point you come up with is heading in the same direction, pointing toward the same opinion or stance. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, you know, English stuff, it's an, it's an English exam. So the question I'm looking at, the number of road accidents will decrease if the age for obtaining a driver's license Oh my goodness, there are two season licenses. <laughs> the mystery is solved. Yeah. So uh, the number of uh, road accidents will decrease if the age for obtaining a driver's license is increased to 20 years. Write an essay giving your views on this statement. In general, there are two types of like uh, instructions you'll get at the end. You might have to more strictly support a particular side or you might have to give your views. When you get the chance to just give your views, it means you may straddle the fence a little bit. However, even if you want to build out an objective kind of two-sided argument, you still need to take one stance. So it means even if you're gonna uh, mention one point that supports side A, if side B is the side you're choosing, your argument should make it, your, your essay should make it clear that this is your main stance. So you still want to be on a side, right? Uh, for me, I prefer to just support one side all the way and maybe just give a little bit of credence to the other side. That way it's not too balanced and it doesn't seem as if I don't know what my opinion is, right? You don't want to be in, in that kind of situation. So here we are, we are at the planning section. As usual, I'm gonna show you how I mark up the planning section. There are three steps to my plan. In fact, there are three steps and the same three steps in, in, in every section. Step one, you guessed it, no prizes there, plan. And I'm gonna plan in 10 minutes. This is my workflow. I, I'll get a chance to see Panda's workflow. So I'm gonna plan in 10 minutes and I need to do three things within this 10 minute period. I need to brainstorm points for both sides. That's my first step in the planning section. Second thing I need to do while planning is I need to choose a side. So even if I want to balance my argument a little bit, I still need to be on a side. For those talking about quality, I'm streaming in at 1080p. So turn up the quality. 
The third thing I want to do is I want to select three points. So this is my, my planning setup. I'm going to brainstorm points for both sides, agree and disagree, pros, cons, side A, side B. Then after looking at the points for sides A and B, I'm going to weigh and say, mm, I think side B is a little bit stronger or I think side A is a little bit easier for me. I'm going to choose a side, right? Then I would have brainstormed some points, remember? I'm going to choose three of those brainstormed points. And those three points are going to be the body of my essay. And if I want to mention a point on the opposing side, I have lots of points to choose from because I would have brainstormed points for both sides. Good. That's my plan. My second step is to write, and this takes me about 25 minutes. So this is assuming that we actually have the full 45 minutes. If you have less than 45 minutes, you have to adjust to time. All right. So in the writing section, what I want to do here is I want to ensure that I have five paragraphs. This is my style. Some teachers um, teach a four paragraph model. I'm an old fashioned guy. I like my five paragraphs. First, I have my intro. When my intro is complete, I'll check that box. Then I'll have point one, then point two, then point three, because I would have chosen three points. And no prizes. If you can guess what comes last, it has to be my conclusion. That's my writing setup. Bam. What's my final step? Review. And if I'm managing my time well, I will have five minutes. Or let's say it took me two minutes to write all of this plan down, then I'd have, uh, say, three minutes in which to review. Now, while reviewing, I won't write out all of the different things to check while reviewing, but common sense will tell you grammar, punctuation, structure, spelling, blah, blah, blah. You know the review stuff. So I've used up half of or two thirds of my planning space. And what I've done is I've written out my workflow, plan, write, review, 10 minutes, 20, 25 minutes, five minutes or three minutes. So here we go. It's time to start planning. What's the first step? First step, brainstorm points for both sides. So for and against. Bam. Let's check the question. The number of road accidents will decrease. The age for obtaining a driver's license is increased to 20 years. All right. I have already written this essay, so I am... I don't need to actually think now, but I'm just showing you the thought process that I took while thinking. So for four, I could, I, I could come up with three points to support this. One, so let's make sure we understand the question, guys. The number of road accidents will decrease, so there will be fewer road accidents if the age for obtaining a driver's license is increased to 20 years. All right. In some countries, and I'm working under this particular assumption, you have to be 18 to acquire an actual license. You can get like a provisional license at 16, but I think it has to be 18 in some countries. I'm not sure if it's most countries. I think in Jamaica, it's 18 to acquire an actual license. So I'll be working with, with that age. So the question is saying, if... 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds cannot get a license. If they have to wait until they reach 20, then the result will be a decline or a decrease in road accidents. All right? So let's say that is true. What are some points I could use to um, support that idea? Well, the first point is easy. Fewer drivers equals fewer accidents. It's, it's, it's simple math. If you have, if you 
deny 18 year olds and 19 year olds from getting a license, then it means we're going to have fewer drivers on the road. Fewer drivers on the road, fewer opportunities for accidents. Yeah. So that's a point that could be used to support. Another point I came up with 18 and 19 year olds are generally not mature enough to handle the responsibility of driving. That's another point I could use to support my idea that we should raise the, the license age to 20. 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds are still not fully adults. And so driving is a pretty big deal. It's an important thing. They shouldn't be allowed to drive, right? It doesn't matter if you actually believe it. It just matters what point you can write in the exam. Yeah? CSEC like, doesn't care what you really believe. They care what points you are able to explain. Yeah? And the third point I could come up with is if the drivers have to wait until they reach 20, then it means two more years of driving practice. It means if you're 18, you can't get a license, what can you do? It means you have more time to practice and become a better driver. So we're, we're, we're going to be having more seasoned or more prepared or more ready drivers on the roads if they have to wait longer and perhaps train longer. Maybe driving school will become, uh, you know, longer, stuff like that. Okay, so what are some points against raising the age? Well, there will be more strain on the public transportation system. Obviously, if we have fewer drivers, it means more persons are going to be forced to take taxis and buses and in certain countries, trains. Yeah. And that will not be beneficial for, for anybody. It's, it's going to be less comfortable for those using the uh, public transportation. And it might actually put pressure on, on the systems themselves. The efficiency might decrease. Right. Another thing is 18 and 19 year olds will be more limited in their productivity. Right. If you're an 18 or 19 year old and you're able to drive, then you're able to be more productive. You can drive to work, drive to school. You can pick up the kids if you have kids or if you have siblings. If you are unable to drive and that's just not an option, the productivity will decrease for a significant um, fraction of the population. What else could we... And in the chat, guys, if you have ideas, you can also jot them down for points for or against. I see a nice point from young boy. Delaying the age for obtaining a driver's license could potentially increase the number of unlicensed drivers, which is an excellent point. I didn't think of that, but it would be an excellent point. Uh, okay, next thing against age is not a significant factor in accidents. So I can write a paragraph saying, age don't matter when we look at the number of accidents. People of all ages are getting into accidents. We can't put the blame on 18 to 19 year olds. All right, before I move on to the writing section, because my, or to the choosing a side section, Panda, what do you think of these points? What would you consider adding to for or against? Um, well, yeah, as I was just saying that I think you could be young and responsible is the biggest thing. I feel like that might be the point that they were probably looking for most when they say, oh, let's just, you know, increase the age and that'll fix accidents as if only young people cause accidents. So that's mm -hmm. definitely a thing. Um, 
Well, honestly, my genuine opinion um, on this question, I'm just leaning more against it because maybe I'm just like, that's just my opinion. I feel like age doesn't have anything to do with it. So all of your points against, I agree with. And if I was mm. doing this, I would have led to against, but in terms of the points themselves, they're good. What um, All right, which one nice. of these arguments do you find to be stronger? Well, it's an interesting question because the argument I prefer to write is mm -hmm. not the argument I believe. And mm -hmm. we're going to end up in this situation from time to time when doing exams. I actually believe, believe that against makes more logical sense because I just don't think age matters that much when you look at accidents. It's not a case where only 18 or most accidents are caused by 18 or 19 year olds. However, I think that these particular points are easy for me to argue. True. Yeah. So I'm going to argue these. So I believe this. I would argue this in a debate, in a real life discussion. But mm -hmm. for the exam, I'm choosing the points that for me, I can quickly without even thinking just generate some ideas make up some realistic statistics and get, get the train moving. So I'm going to go with four. Mm -hmm. That's a good yeah. thing. I also think it's important to consider the um, examiner themselves who's going to be reading this. Chances are it's an older person. Chances are they might more so agree with, yes, you know, young people are driving fast and crazy and that's why. So for exam purposes, mm -hmm. it's probably give you a little edge to argue for this. Mm. Yeah, that, that's that's a, an interesting insight too. And Gabby is supporting what young boy is saying, you know, 18 to 19 year olds, they're gonna drive even if it's illegal. So you're just gonna have more unlicensed drivers, yeah. So that's a point you could raise if you if you wanna put that in there. All right, so going back to my planning, because in the exam I'd be constantly checking my planning sheet to be mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm on track. I can say that I have brainstormed. Um, I, I like to brainstorm four to five points, but um, in this session, because I did this question in about 35 minutes, I only got to three for each. I stopped there. But if you can oh, find yeah, four or five, no problem. For a second, no I thought option. you said 45 points, and I was like, what? No, four <laughs> to five points. Okay. Four to five. Definitely not 45. That would take the, the entire paper. Yeah, paper stamp. All right, so I have brainstormed. I can check that box. I have chosen a side. I'm going to do four. So now I'm going to select three points, which is easy because I only have three points. Hmm. Bam. Planning is done. And this took me less than 10 minutes here on stream, but it's because this is all pre-thought. But it actually took me about 10 minutes in real time. Yeah. yeah. So 10 minutes should be able to, to get you through these steps brainstorm points and you want to think about both sides even if you have an idea of what side you want to choose it's important to give your mind the option because you never know you might be surprised that wow i thought that four would have been easy but against seems easier so at least give it a give it a give it a thought before you decide um you know to go for side a or side b yeah all right so we're going to move to the writing part, and I'll start with my intro. You should know by now, especially the English B students who have been following my essay videos, we start with a hook, then we move on to the thesis statement, or like the actual side you're on, and then you list out the points you will be tackling. That is your intro. So it's hook. Going to grab the reader's attention. Then it's thesis. Thesis is such a big word. Why do we say thesis? It just means your, your stance. What do you believe? And then you're going to touch on the three points that the essay will discuss. What it means is, is if someone reads your intro, they know what to expect in your essay. They're not going to be surprised. Like, like, where did this point come from? Where did that point come from? It's going to be easy someone mm. says how is japan i'll answer that at the end of the stream <laughs> but it, in a word it, it's fine it's fine right now all right so let's let's get to my intro so i have five paragraphs right intro point 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 conclusion 
Do you do five paragraphs as well, Panda? Um, usually it works out to be five paragraphs. Sometimes it's four, depending on, but usually five. Um, because like mm -hmm. you, I like to have intro, outro clearly defined. And then I like to have, well, four points in the middle, three, four, and one against. So it usually turns out to be five paragraphs. Um, but then I too, I don't like to stay too um, rigid with how I'm writing things because in the moment, a lot of things change. So I go in with a plan. Mm -hmm. That's what I would like to happen. But yeah. I leave it open as yeah. I'm writing. And mm. Yeah, that, that's completely fine. It's good to be able to adjust on the fly if needed. But uh, in the moment, students know the difference between adjusting and forgetting the plan, right? Don't yeah. throw away the plan. But if necessary, you can adjust maybe an extra paragraph or a one, one less paragraph. It won't damage you too much. But make sure that you're adjusting deliberately and it's not, oh, I forgot to write the intro. Right? Yeah. So the, the plan is, is not something that's going to restrict you. It's something that's going to guide you. So look at it that way. Yeah, yeah I think it's... All um, right, so... Yeah. Um, Theodore Roosevelt, I think it was, who has this famous quotation, um, planning, or well, plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. And I think... What that really means, especially when I see it in real life, you go in there to any situation with a plan, exactly how it's going to work. And the first thing you notice when you get there, something is different. But at the same time, mm -hmm. you can't go without having plans because usually you have plan A, B, C, D, and now you can adjust dynamically to fit the situation. And in exam circumstances, you know, the summary might have swallowed up way more time than you were picturing. So you'll be super glad you have a plan for when you reach down to section D. And there's no way to tell. Um, so yeah, I use the plan as a guideline. I know what I'm hoping to have happen, but I don't stick to mm -hmm. super, super rigidly. So yeah. 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 That, that's how I look at it as well. And even okay. my, my SS structure, my mm -hmm. SS structure isn't, this is my general thing, but it's not, um, super rigid. I actually have two types of intros that I use. This is mm -hmm. my more regular one. But incidentally, um, for this particular essay, I'm using the one that's not so regular. So it's interesting. Because for this intro, I do hook. And then I do thesis. And that's it. The intro is done. So depending on how you want to introduce, you can give a nice thesis statement without going into the three particular points. But... I, but the three points will fit within the thesis. Or you can explicitly state you're going to be discussing A, B, C. Right? So for this essay, for the, the next essay I'll show you, I'll explicitly state the three points in the intro. For this one, I will not. And you will see how it flows. All right. So my intro, I need a nice intro that is going to fit with the idea that kids should not be on the roads. Right? So I'm going to put on my old man beard. And a grumpy face, and I want to ban all 18 and 19 year olds from the road. So this is my intro that I came up with. Oh, what a nice start, right? Mario Kart. Let me make this a little bigger for you guys. Okay, there we go. Mario Kart. Oh, okay. I'm interested already, speed. so. I know you mentioned gaming PC, so I know this is gonna, it's gonna strike a chord. Need for Speed, and, and these are all games I've mastered over the over the years, and Burnout, are just a few of the captivating. racing games that have gripped the attention of children and teenagers. I can say worldwide, but I want to say all over the world. I'll just be old-fashioned for now. All over the world. 
However, so my hook is two sentences. And this is why I didn't bother to list all three points. I didn't want to make the intro too long. But I really wanted a long hook this time. However, real world driving is not a game. Uh, yes, that's mm -hmm. a old guy thing to say. Mm -hmm. And I could end it there, but I'm going to go on a little bit longer. And because I want to bring some emotion in and mm -hmm. the consequences mm -hmm. of a single lapse in judgment. Is there an E here? I can't spell judgment. I think there's no E. I don't think there's an E. There's no E. Mm -hmm. There's no E. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no E. And uh, the consequences of a single lapse in judgment can be devastating. That's my hook. Right? What do you think about this hook? It's on the longer side, but I think it, it, it really sets the tone for how strong this essay is going to be. Yeah. Mario Kart, Need for Speed, and Burnout are just a few of the captivating racing games that have gripped the attention of children and teenagers all over the world. However, real world, real world driving is not a game. And the consequences of a single lapse in judgment can be devastating. Mm -hmm. oh, there's an E? Is that mm -hmm. e in judgment? Yep. Now that I see it here, it looks funny. Yeah, it's just literally like judge, meant stuck together. Uh, all right. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's my hook. So because I've opted for a longer hook, I'm going to make the rest of the intro more concise. So I'm not going to list all three points. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and just give an overarching thesis and then jump in. So mm -hmm. this is how I do it. While, and I'm going to acknowledge the other side of the argument, while many conquer, while many agree, while many think, you know, while, while many concur with the current age for obtaining a driver's license, and I'm going to put in brackets 18 years, that's because this is different from country to country. So I want to make it clear what, what I'm talking about. Science and statistics, I'm already building a, a little bit of credibility or anticipation for credibility, even though I'm, I'm in my intro. I'm not going to list any statistics, obviously, but I'm going to make them know that, hey, I'm coming with facts here. So while many concur with the current age for obtaining a driver's license, 18 years, science and statistics reveal that increasing this age would result in a decrease in road accidents. Bam, that's my intro. I think an intro like this can go without listing the three points I'm gonna talk about because the the hook is a little bit longer a little bit more profound and the thesis is a little bit more encapsulating so with this i think it, it satisfies um what an intro needs to be yeah what do you think of the intro panda um i think it's definitely interesting like i felt hooked by the hook like um i want to see where you're going with this when I'm doing these, I always try to make sure that it's completely clear which side of the argument I'm supporting right out the gate. So I think mm -hmm. this thing about consequences of lapse in judgment, devastating, those are all negative words. So you could, if you're just reading this for the first time as the examiner, you'd be able to tell this all sounds like it's sliding in a negative direction. So he's going to be against the statement. And I think that's probably the most important thing besides capturing the, reader, the reader's attention most important thing is to make it clear which side of the argument you support. So, 
Yeah. All right. Thank you, Panda. And I, while I'm asking Panda for advice, Panda has no qualms with telling me, Adam, that sucks. Right? Panda came into one of my classes L-O-L. and gave me a summary of four out of five. Wow. Okay. Gave my summary of four out of five in front of my students. So I'm just letting you know I'm getting real feedback here. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not a. That's true. I won't tell you if it's. Season. I won't tell you it's good if it's not good. So. <laughs> yeah. And I'm getting some some good comments from 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 the teacher in the chat here as well. So I think the hook is effective, even though I haven't listed the three specific points I'll be touching on. In the next essay, I'll show you if we get the time. I'll show you a shorter hook, and mm-hmm. I'll show you when I have more space to say okay. I'm going to be touching on that, that, and that. But the stance is clear, and you should know where I'm going with this. And that's really the point of the intro. All right, so the first point, I'm going to go back to my planning. I can check off the intro. Now I need to do point one. Point one is fewer drivers equals fewer accidents. Now, between planning and writing, you might want to switch around the order of the points. So what if you say, okay, I want to start with this one because it's stronger or that one because it's, it's, it works well after the intro. So you don't need to write the points in the order in which you plan them, right? You write them in a, in a way that's just most logical. And yeah, um, Kewama here is saying that she has counted eight and nine words already. So making my intro mm-hmm. longer just would have diminishing returns at this point. I need to get into it. Yeah, that's the idea. All right, so I'm getting into the first point. And while writing, remember, whether it's argumentative or persuasive, technically, you still want to persuade, right, to some degree. Because you want the reader to believe in your opinion and you want them to understand that, hey, you're making sense. So don't be afraid to be a little spicy not too much attitude, no sarcasm, definitely, but you know, be confident in your writing. Believe that you're right. Okay, so the first and most obvious reason, using words like obvious, don't overdo it, but what this does is it indicates a sense of certainty in your point, and it kind of gives the idea that if you disagree with me, you are the one not seeing something clearly. So you, you want to kind of make it as persuasive as possible without, you know, leaning toward being too sarcastic or anything like that. So the first and most obvious reason for which um, wait, uh, the first and most obvious reason for which Raising the driving age would decrease road accidents is a matter of simple mathematics. Simple math. For those asking questions, I'm on section D, writing a persuasive slash argumentative piece. The first and most obvious reason for which raising the driving age would decrease road accidents is a matter of simple mathematics. Fewer drivers equals fewer accidents. It's a simple point but I can't not include it. Raising the driving age to 20. Note I'm not writing the numeral 20. I'm writing out the word 20. That's how we do it. Uh, I mean, I guess you could, but I here I, I wrote that, but just in parentheses. I just like to be sure. Who says I'm on storytelling? (laughs) I'm not on storytelling. I'm on section D, essay writing. Raising the driving age to 20 
would remove 18 and 19 year old drivers from the roads. While this change might seem in insigni while this change might seem in insignificant even for a small country like Jamaica I like to mention my own country that amounts to approximately 100,000 fewer potential drivers. Throwing in statistics, you can't have a persuasive or you can't have a persuasive piece without some statistics in there, right? There would be fewer drivers to make mistakes on the roads as well as fewer vehicles to present opportunities for traffic complications. I didn't want to repeat the word accident, so I just said traffic complications. All right. Uh, this is a longer paragraph, but it, it captures my first point here. So the first and most obvious reason for which raising the age would, um, would decrease road accidents is a matter of simple mathematics. Fewer drivers equals fewer accidents. Raising the driving age to 20 would remove 18 and 19-year-old drivers from the roads. While this change might seem insignificant, even for a small country like Jamaica, that amounts to approximately 100,000 fewer potential drivers. There would be fewer drivers to make mistakes on the roads, as well as fewer vehicles to present opportunities for traffic complications. All right. That's my, that's my first line of reasoning. And notice I am not attacking the young drivers. I'm not saying 18 and 19 year olds are stupid and crazy. I'm just saying it's, it's a math issue. If you remove 18 and 19 year olds, you're going to be removing some drivers from the road. Therefore, we're going to have freer roadways, right? Because if you have more drivers, you have more opportunities for accidents, you have more congestion, you have more issues. So even if the question had said, let's remove 35-year-olds and 49-year-olds from the road, it would be the same logic here. We would have fewer drivers in the end. And I just did some quick mental math to arrive at 100,000 by looking at the population of Jamaica, how many persons might be 18 to 19, and I just came up with an approximation. It doesn't have to be anything accurate, but it shouldn't be far-fetched. Like I wouldn't say 1 million fewer potential drivers. That wouldn't make sense since Jamaica will never have a few million. Well, there's a few million um, residents. All right, that's my first paragraph. Now I need to look for my second one. So point one is done. And point two is 18 to 19 year olds are generally not mature enough to handle the responsibility of driving. So this is what I need to do. Note for each paragraph, um, I introduce the point in the first sentence and then I explain. That's what I'm going to do again. The second reason for increasing the driving age 
is a matter of commonly accepted scientific fact. You want to throw in words like research, words like scientific, words like fact. And I'm going to state that fact here. Human beings, what do human beings do? They mature as they age. So um, one, one, one logical technique you can use when writing a persuasive piece is you want to throw in as many agreeable facts as possible. Facts that no one can dispute. Who is going to dispute the fact that human beings mature as they age? Of course, you have a few exceptions, but in general, that's an accepted fact. So I'm going to put that there, and I'm going to try to apply it now to this specific scenario of the driver's license. So human beings mature as they age. What I'm going to do, I'm going to acknowledge the other side, and then I'm going to defeat the other side. While there are some children that might be more mentally mature than some adults, so I'm bringing up the argument that could be made against me, and then I'm going to crush it. In general, persons become more cautious and thoughtful as they age. Right? Considering this, so this is a linking phrase. What it means is I've given you a fact and now I'm going to give you an implication of that fact. So I say, considering this, the age increase, still got to bring it all back to the age increase. would lead to what? A lower percentage of what? Reckless. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try to use a nice word here. I'm going to say boundary pushing. Reckless and boundary pushing drivers. I didn't just want to say careless drivers. Reckless and boundary pushing drivers. Naturally, I'm making it clear that my argument is a common sense argument. Naturally leading to what? Is it going to be more accidents? No, fewer accidents. All right. Do you think this is a, a clear and logical point? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. definitely following the plan too. Yeah. I Even feel if like... You disagree in real life. Yeah. <laughs> So the second reason for increasing the... Yes, go ahead, Panda. Yeah, I'm saying it's, it's definitely consistent with where you started. Um, the first reason it blends right into the second reason, and I feel like reckless and boundary pushing comes right back to the intro where you said that it's easy to have a lapse with serious consequences. So the whole thing is flowing, which mm -hmm. is good. Yeah. I think there's a, there's a connection from one point to the next. Yeah, so the second reason for increasing the driving age is a matter of commonly accepted scientific fact. Human mm -hmm. beings mature as they age. So I'm introducing the point with this agreeable fact that 90% of people would agree with. Then I'm going to lead you into my actual point now. While there are some children that might be more mentally mature than some adults, it's important once or twice to acknowledge the opposing side, so it doesn't come across as you not knowing the alternative way of thinking. So yes, I'll, I'll give you that. Some children might be more mentally mature than some adults, but in general, right, in most cases, persons become more cautious and thoughtful as they age. 
right? Considering this, the age increase would lead to a lower percentage of reckless and boundary pushing drivers, naturally leading to fewer accidents. So I'm giving you cause and effect. I'm giving you a logical flow of thought. So there's, there's not much room to, to say my argument isn't sensible. Even if you disagree, it's not going to be because my argument isn't logical, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go to my last point because I'm halfway there. So I've done point two, done point two. Next, it's going to be two more years of driving practice. If we increase the age, younger drivers will have more time to practice and become better drivers. Time to write that down. Finally, because it's my final point, raising the driving age. Uh, let's instead of. I said driving age last time. Let's go back to raising the age for obtaining a license. I used that earlier on, but I didn't I haven't used it recently. So finally, raising the age for obtaining a license uh, to 20. Yeah, raising the age to 20. would, I think I've said would lead to, or already would result in, I'm going to just change that. What was the last thing I said? Result in or lead to, would, or I, I said lead to here, so I'm going to say result in. Finally, raising the age for obtaining a license uh, would result in fewer drivers Let me adjust as I go. Uh, raising the age to obtain a license to 20. All right, I'm going to save this until a bit later. Sorry, guys. Just like in real life, it's a little bit of back and forth sometimes. Uh, raising the driving age to 20. Raising the age for obtaining a license to 20. Okay, I'm going to... I forgot which point I was adding. Would give prospective drivers, because I'm talking about uh, more time to practice, right? Would give prospective drivers an additional two years to practice driving before, before what? Before being licensed. I think in this case, we have S-E-D, maybe. I'm not going to debate the spelling of license again. My goodness, it's been haunting me. This would, uh, last time I said result in, I need more synonyms for this. Uh, this would, I might change it later. This would result in uh, newly licensed drivers being what? Being much more prepared. Because if you have to wait until you're 20, you're going to be more prepared by the time you get the license. So this would result in uh, newly, licensed, newly licensed drivers being much more prepared to face the road. Instead of saying much more prepared to drive, I want to make it seem as if, you know, facing the road is this big obstacle and challenge that should be taken seriously. So I'm going to use the term face the road because it's a challenge, right? I uh, would be much, much more prepared to face the road and have to bring it back home. Much less likely to cause accidents. Everything must come back home to this point. Much less likely to cause accident. And I am going to add in a statistic here. Uh, this statistic is made up, but I try to make my statistics realistic. As it stands, uh, this is a nice word, a disproportionate, my goodness, there should be more Ps. I think that's fine. As it stands, a disproportionate 
25% of all road accidents are caused by drivers under 22. Uh, just for consistency. Drivers under 22. This means that on the whole, young drivers need to spend more time Practicing before being permitted to obtain a license. All right, that's my final point. Finally, raising the age for obtaining a license to 20 would give prospective drivers an additional two years to practice driving before being licensed. This would result in newly licensed drivers being much more prepared to face the road and much less likely to cause accidents. As it stands, a disproportionate 25% of all road accidents are caused by drivers under 22. This means that on the whole, young drivers need to spend more time practicing before being permitted to obtain a license. All right, so now I need to drop my conclusion and that's gonna be it. Uh, bam, bam need to conclude so in concluding i i want to reinforce my stance and very 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 briefly state my three reasons for my stance so i'm going to open with as explained because it should be clear by now as explained Increasing, increasing the age for, uh, let me not say obtaining again, let me say acquiring. Increasing the age for acquiring a driver's license to 20. Yeah, increasing that age to 20 would lead to, uh, so I'm going to recap the three things that it's going to lead to know. So it would lead to fewer drivers, recapping the first point, competing to use the already congested, let me say motorways. It's a nice synonym for road. Uh, would lead to Fewer drivers competing to use the already congested motorways, as well as a driving population. I'm going to wrap up the final two points in one here, as well as a driving population mm -hmm. that is more mature, touching on the second point, and more experienced touching on the third point so this sentence this one sentence wraps up my three points as explained increasing the age for acquiring a driver's license to 20 would lead to fewer drivers competing to use the already congested motorways as well as a driving population that is more mature and more experienced all right and my closing sentence my closing two sentences these factors, because I've just listed three factors, I've just explained them in, in the essay. Uh, these factors would logically, because I'm making sense, would logically lead to, lead to what? Uh, as I've said decrease too many times. Generally, it would lead to a decline in road accidents and what i'll do since i have an extra one minute on the clock in my imaginary scenario i did have one minute or so left after reaching this far i'm going to wrap up with a 
nice closing sentence a nice closing sentence while this change would initially disappoint teens who are excited to get behind the wheel more synonyms for drive who are excited to get behind the wheel this is a small price to pay for safer roadways and that is it it's my conclusion i've retouched on the three points and i've wrapped up by re-establishing my stance or my opinion on the matter and someone asked asks about someone asked about including one counterpoint i didn't include at least one counterpoint but i didn't dedicate a whole paragraph to a counterpoint so there's no need to use an Are you frozen or is it me or are we still seeing? Are we back online? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. My, my connection dropped just now. I oh. was saying, I'm not sure if you heard me. I, I did include a counterpoint, at least one, but I didn't dedicate an entire paragraph to it, which is, mm -hmm. which is fine. All right, so as usual, my screen share is, is no gone because of that one little hiccup. All right, let me see if I can, uh, if I can super quickly bring that back up because what I want to do now is just read the thing as a whole and then Panda will give me some feedback and we'll move on to one of Panda's essays. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we are. Uh, boom. Sheer screen. It's persuasive. Why didn't you include the counter? No, there was a bit of a counter argument, but it didn't have a whole paragraph. So it might be something that you didn't pick up so much because probably it was still being read in parts. But I think when it's read together, we'll hear how it sounds complete as an argument yeah um, you'll be able to see the counterpoint mm -hmm. in the full in the full story all right okay let's hope it doesn't take another 15 minutes for this screen to be shared all right here we are no, there we go <clears throat> all right let me throw us over to the side panda hope you don't mind um make this a little bit bigger Thanks. all right here we go. And it's very satisfying to check that final box. Conclusion done. All right, here we go from top. Mario Kart, Need for Speed, and Burnout are just a few of the captivating racing games that have gripped the attention of children and teenagers all over the world. However, real world driving is not a game and the consequences of a single lapse in judgment can be devastating. Here is an introduction of a counterpoint already. Let me just highlight them as I go. While many concur with the current age, not quite a counterpoint, while many concur with the current age for obtaining a driver's license, 18 years, science and statistics reveal that increasing this age would result in a decrease in road accidents. The first and most obvious reason for which raising the driving age would decrease road accidents is a matter of simple mathematics. Fewer drivers equals fewer accidents. Raising the driving age to 20 would remove 18 and 19 year olds, 19 year old drivers from the roads. While this change might seem insignificant, 
even for a small country like Jamaica, that amounts to approximately 100,000 fewer potential drivers. There would be fewer drivers to make mistakes on the roads, as well as fewer vehicles to present opportunities for traffic complications. The second reason for increasing the driving age is a matter of commonly accepted scientific fact. Human beings mature as they age. And here's a little counterpoint again. While there are some children that might be more mentally mature than some adults, because you could argue that on the other side, in general, so when you bring up a counterpoint, be sure to defeat it. Don't bring it up if you can't defeat it. In general, persons become more cautious and thoughtful as they age. Considering this, the age increase would lead to a lower percentage of reckless and boundary-pushing drivers, naturally leading to fewer accidents. Finally, raising the age for obtaining a license to 20 would give prospective drivers an additional two years to practice driving before being licensed. This would result in newly licensed drivers being much more prepared to face the road and much less likely to cause accidents. As it stands, a disproportionate 25% of all road accidents are caused by drivers under 22. This means that on the whole, young drivers need to spend more time practicing before being permitted to obtain a license. Conclusion, as explained, Increasing the age for acquiring a driver's license to 20 would lead to fewer drivers competing to use the already congested motorways, as well as a driving population that is more mature and more experienced. These factors would logically lead to a decline in road accidents. While this change would initially, another counterpoint-ish, while this change would initially disappoint teens who are excited to get behind the wheel, this is a small price to pay for safer roadways. All right, what do you guys think? Do you think it's a complete essay? Do you think I followed my plan? And do you think my points were logical? I definitely thought that the points were logical. I felt like this whole thing felt very logical. I thought the flow was good. Um, the vocabulary that you used to establish that you don't support these young drivers just getting out there doing all sorts of things. I feel like that was um, consistent throughout the whole thing. You didn't start off like um, sounding in one voice and then you lapsed to something else uh, further on. So, yeah, so I think I really might give this um, 4.9 out of 5. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, coming from Panda, I'll take it. I'll take it. So this is how it looks on the page. It's one, how many full pages? One full page, mm -hmm. two full pages, two pages and a little bit. So it's not, it's not that long. Okay. I think you're going to be writing something that looks like this in the exam. Five paragraphs, about two pages long. All right. In the chat, any feedback? Anything you would want to critique or change? It's okay if, if you would want to critique anything. No problem. I'm open to critiques. Whenever I get the chance, I like to actually count the, like, I don't recommend on the exam actually obsessively counting because that's using up time that um, obviously is better spent elsewhere. And this mm. also is not a solid word limit. It's like an approximate 250 to 300. But during mm. practice and stuff, definitely count the words so you can see how your handwriting looks um, when you've hit that word right. limit. Yeah. Let me, I'll, I'll count three lines, average it, and then count the number of lines. All right, fair. That will give me an, an approximation. All right, so approximately eight words per line how many lines twenty one and this page is the same so about forty two plus three about forty five and a few lines are shorter so let's call it forty four lines forty four times eight math geniuses let me know what that is
can't be talking to me with that. I'm not a math genius. 352. <laughs> I use my calculator because it's nighttime. At night, my brain goes to half capacity. Mm -hmm. So based okay. on the math, it's 352, which is, I think, just about right. Okay. On average, that's not bad. That's not too far over 300-ish. Oh, it's Maybe 300, first. right? <laughs> yeah, no, if it was a bit fewer, that might have been cool. All right. What I could do is, because the hook is a little bit lengthy, mm -hmm. so just a quick edit I could make is I could stop this sentence here. This is um, Real-world driving is not a game, period. And I could erase this. Yeah, because I think that um, counterpoint was troubling people, or almost counterpoints anyway, so it might be... Yeah. And I strike could, out a piece of that. I could strike out uh, and <laughs> here and say while or I say where while the while this change would initially disappoint teens who are excited to get behind the wheel, I could actually just end it here. If I want to. Because this is like a fancy closing. I could end it here. And it could just end. These, factor would these factors would logically lead to a decline in road accidents. And then I would be at about 300 words. Yeah. Um, what is your name, dude? Boss. FF. Yeah, you're correct about that. Um, it's just an average thing, but I think it's good that we're exploring um, what you could do in the exam if you needed to get those words down or up because, you know, in that moment that they're going to judge you based on, you do want to have your options open. Yeah. I, I do think, though, that seeing the word limit isn't super strict mm -hmm. on section D. It's not like the summary. If you go over... By like 50 or fewer words, it might not be a big deal. Just don't go under. That would be my fear in the exam, going under. Mm -hmm. But going over by a bit might be okay. All right, so that's my that's my thing. Panda. Right. Anything else before you touch on yours? Um maybe just one thing related to the word count issue, even if you're not like counting, counting. Everybody has practiced a lot of summaries by the time you reach into the exam. And if that's kind of like 120 words, you're trying to write like twice as long as that. So maybe if your summary is generally like maybe six or seven sentences, that's how mine come out. Um, you're looking for about 14, 15 type of thing, not too, too far. But I also think the amount of lines they give you is a good way to average if you've gone way too far. Like if you run out of space, you're doing too much. But otherwise, I think it's good. It's not super strict. Um, yeah. yeah. So I thought this was good. Right. I feel like it was logical. It covered that. I think the prompt itself led to an argument where you could have a more definitive or rigid feeling about it because actually dealing with something that's serious, roadway accidents yeah. and reckless driving and stuff. Other prompts might be something that's a little bit more of a social issue or something that might require a gentler um, take. Yeah, the paper nice that, approach. literally, the, the question that I chose to do, I'm going to work with you guys, is from 2021, January, um, that says all students must study at least one foreign language until the end of their secondary school education. Ooh. Yeah, and that's definitely not something even... When I saw it, I'm like, how do you find the way to feel strongly about this or to really argue this point? So it's one of those that required me to kind of work into it. And I thought that's an important thing as well. If it's not a prompt that you like or even have an opinion on, then it's harder to get into character, but you still have to do it, right? Hmm. Okay, so let me see if I can figure out sharing my screen. Um... Right, I want to get this particular tab up here. Okay, 
And if you let me know if we're seeing everything and if it's moving and stuff. Okay, you need to, okay, I'll, I'll, should I add it to the stream? I see a screen. Oh, yes, I'd appreciate that. All right, I'll add. There we go. All right. Um, and how's the mm -hmm. visibility there, guys? Can you see all right, or? I wish I could take off all of these sidebars that aren't really doing anything for us, but hopefully you can kind of make this out. Is there a full screen mode in view? Let's look that up. The the view tab. You have a view tab at the top. Mm -hmm. it might might be full screen. Nope, I don't nope. think we're seeing that. What's the all feedback right. in the chat looking like? Are we doing all right? Looks good to me anyway. All right. I chose a bigger font because I wanted people to be able to at least make that part out. That's going to be what's important. Um, so, yeah. All right. Apparently, this is full screen mode anyway. So, this is what we've got mm. to work with. Okay. So, on to the question, guys. Um, we're looking at section D, as we know, and the suggested time for this is 45 minutes. Um, on your exam, you may have left this for actually last when I was doing mine. I did this third, so I did the summary, then the um, section B expository writing, then I jumped to this and did this before the story because I just felt like I was weakest at writing the story. But it is what it is. So however you've personally decided to do this, you only have to write about 250 to 300 words here. So it's something that, you know, it's not as challenging as the other sections. Maybe they all have the challenges, but let's go. All right, so we know that in this, we're gonna be judged on the appropriateness of the contents, as they say here then the clarity, organization, and development of your arguments, and the correctness of grammar, sentence structure, paragraphs, vocabulary, spelling, and punctuation. So it's kind of a tall order, but at the same time, it's the same sort of correct writing that you'd be doing um, for the rest of the paper. So I don't think it's too diff different, the skills that are actually required here. So the first thing I would do is just really look at this prompt, read it, internalize it, and decide if it's something that I understand before I can even tell if I agree or disagree. So breaking it down, all students, so that's kind of the challenge here, all, not just people who want to, but literally everybody, must study at least one foreign language until the end of their secondary school education. So start to finish, everybody's just studying a foreign language. So at this point, I'm like, okay, this isn't something that I feel super strongly about, um, this is what I'm working with. So I come down here to my planning section. Because of how I open this document up, it doesn't exactly have the box, and we're going to be doing it um, with typing, but we just saw how it would look on the exam, so I trust that won't be an issue, right? Okay, so persuasive writing. I choose mostly to state my opinion and make it clear that I hold this opinion. So there's the idea of being for or against, we know this one. Um, but because I don't necessarily only hold the idea of being argumentative, but more so, as they say, writing an essay giving my views on this statement, or sometimes it says write an essay giving your opinion. Sometimes it doesn't have to be so much like you're trying to convince as much as you're making it's very clear why you hold the opinion that you hold, right? So I don't go too heavy on the for or against. Sometimes I just put it as like good versus bad, things that I think about whatever the statement was, but that's a part of how I do it, right? We're focusing in on this prompt that everybody needs to study at least one foreign language until the end of school, right? All right. So what could potentially be, and in this case, I things is the most appropriate thing to say, a benefit. One of the things I realized after I brainstormed this a little bit 
is that the students could probably get jobs. You know, you often see this on um, job listings and so on. It's just a benefit and you have access to a much wider range of jobs if you have the ability to speak more than one language, right? So I thought also in terms of um, appealing to the actual examiner's mind, you that kind of jobs, employment type of thing, that's kind of where they're going to be. That's something that they could relate to. Another benefit that I came up with was that you can make friends, um, speak foreign languages. So if you want to say foreign friends. Now that is my attempt to be broader than just having this serious idea of, okay, it's only about jobs or something. Friends and socialization are on the other side of the spectrum. So I'm attempting to broaden my arguments with more ways that you can use this. Because even focusing in on the prompt here, to say that everybody is studying just so that they can get a job, um, a foreign language, that's kind of unlikely. And you could immediately see how someone could argue against that with the, are you really going to use foreign language stuff just for, you know, getting a job and everybody to study? So that's why I chose to put that in there. So I have the opportunity to make a broader argument. And then I thought that another um, positive thing is that it can actually be easy and fulfilling. Now, that is something that doesn't just make itself into a benefit just like that all by itself, but it came from thinking about the counter arguments to this. So for this particular um, case, I'm looking at drawbacks and I began thinking, what are some drawbacks to this? Number one, you could say that not everybody is ever going to use the skill. Like literally you learn Spanish in school or something and when does it ever really come up in your life? Somebody could argue that. Um, you could say that it's takes a lot of time away from studying other and arguably more useful subjects. I could hear somebody making that um, argument. And I was trying to think of a third thing that would allow me to decide which of these things I could easily um, support. And the fact that I didn't come up with anything right away, like if I thought for two more seconds, I probably could have, but the benefits were winning. And I was trying to keep conscious of the time as well, because I knew that composing this would be um, some effort. So I literally did not plan it any further than this, because I already knew that I was going to be going for essentially the five paragraph um, style, where I was going to have an intro intro. Then I was going to just basically put point one, point two, three, outro. Like literally I'm keeping it as simple as that. Remember at this point in the exam, one, they're not asking you for much more than that. Two, you're not trying to um, run out of time, exhaust yourself and so on. And three, most of them trying to determine how well you write and so on. You've already passed that in the story and the summary and stuff. So at this point, you're just trying to put the, the cherry on top, so to speak. All right. So this is the idea. And I felt pretty much planned at this stage. The drawback I choose or chose to use as a um, counter argument is this particular one of it takes a lot of time away, which I think is a very valid point. And so I was going to sandwich that in between um, these two benefits and the last benefit so that it would have a pretty decent flow. That Okay, it takes time, but it can be easy. It can be fulfilling. And that's what's up. Then I just instantly wanted to start writing because that's like how much time you have to plan. So I don't usually put like a crazy amount of effort into the hook um, in terms of like 
trying to put too much information in though, because a lot of times I find that when I'm staring at a blank page, it's tough to actually know how to get started, you know? So ultimately, I just try to put like a general statement or something that sounds good, but it's not too um, arguey arguey or too tough to fix. Like it's not too specific in terms of how it is. You can always change it up or decide to go in a different direction. It doesn't make you commit to anything too much in the beginning, but it still sounds good. So what I did was I said, languages are like keys. Okay, that's an interesting enough statement. And I think the reader's instantly wondering, so how are you gonna back that up now? Um, the next thing I wanted to say, they unlock like no. They unlock the world for those fortunate enough to possess them. Now, right here, I want to start talking about this vocabulary thing that they always request. They always say, okay, make sure you got this vocabulary together. I don't like to use words that are beyond my grasp. I have a pretty good vocabulary, but I think for students in this, it's just a lot of things to manage. So I don't like to use extremely big words or whatever. I just like to switch out an ordinary word. So here I could have said have, right? But I chose to put possess instead because I think that's a word that we all know, but it's slightly retro and just a simple word, and I think it's not too hard to reach and it improves the flow, right? So that's just my intro statement. Languages are like keys. They unlock the world for those fortunate enough to possess them. And then this is why it is such a wonderful idea. Um, and so this is my attempt here to literally state that I think that it's good. That's it, that's all I'm doing here. It's a wonderful idea. So the examiner is not gonna be confused. They're not gonna have any room to wonder which side of the argument I support, like it's just literally right there. And you can almost copy paste this into any prompt that you do. And that's a lot of what I'm trying to do here, just make it easy to um, determine what it is you can actually do in that moment if you're stumped for ideas. So at this point, I just literally reinsert the prompt. So for all students to study at least one foreign language, will you want to correct that for me? You won't. Okay. Right, so we're just reinserting prompt here wholesale. Um, so do it twice. All right, so at this point, we have this hook type intro, and you see where I'm going. They unlock the world. Okay, so that's where I've decided. Now, this is why it's such a wonderful idea. We get that I support this. This is the prompt again, keeps everybody on track to study at least one foreign language during the secondary school years. By tying wonderful and the prompt together, I'm giving the examiner very broad clues as to why or what, which side of the argument I support. So I'm going in and doing some more of that here. Benefits of acquiring, and this is me using a little bit of vocabulary. The skill of speaking a foreign tongue cannot be overstated. And literally anything that you choose to do, any prompts that you have, any side of the argument you choose, you can say something exactly like this to close off your intro paragraph. So you could say the benefits of acquiring the skill of spelling, no, speaking. A foreign language, well, a foreign tongue, I said, so as not to just repeat language, language all the time, but you see it. So if it was negatives, I could say that the benefits, no, 
first let me tell you what else you could say besides this exact statement, right? So instead of the benefits of XYZ, you could say the benefits of XYZ far outweigh, cannot be overstated, are numerous, are widespread, just anything that says and increases the amount of good that you allegedly think is happening here. Or the amount of bad, you just switch this word to like drawbacks. So the drawbacks of XYZ cannot be overstated or the drawbacks cannot be um, overlooked. They are multifold, that type of thing. But the most important thing for me is to ensure that this first paragraph gets us going, shows which side I support, and that's what's up. So now I start with the first benefit, right? So I'm starting with another basic statement. One of the most outstanding benefits for a student of foreign language This is another reusable um, statement. And then you just put in whatever you decided to say, right? Is gaining the ability to compete for jobs in foreign, keep doing that, markets. Right. Um, this statement is okay just by itself, like you can definitely understand, and I think the examiner would understand, what is your benefit? So a pair can get jobs. I've translated that into ability to compete for jobs in foreign markets. I don't love how many times I've said foreign here, so I'm gonna have to start switching that up, but let's just continue, okay? We're just gonna go in with a little example here. Adding, I am fluent in I've got XYZ language, um, which maybe you don't want to put this exactly, but I think it's okay. I'm fluent in XYZ language to a resume will, no, better yet, be sure to impress potential employers. You could also have said something like um, recruiters or anything like that, just to spice it up a little bit, but same idea. And then I say later in their careers, because this is also just sticking with the job idea, making that very clear, this valuable skill will continue to make them sought after. So there's a little bit of language and vocabulary. Um, employees. So you can see this is a simple enough paragraph. It has three sentences, just enough to qualify. And it is saying all the same thing. One of the most outstanding benefits, right? So you know I'm literally supporting this being a positive thing. Is the ability to compete for jobs. This answers the question. This goes into a little bit more detail. Adding I'm fluent, a short impress. And then this part I just added partly for another sentence and partly so I could prove that this has future use, learning a language. Because remember, this is all tying to why it would be good for absolutely everybody to learn a foreign language, okay? So it's time for point two, and I'm getting a little conversational here by saying naturally. So in this case, naturally, is that not how you spell that? Okay, we'll see after. I'm not going to waste time on that now. Naturally, not all the benefits of learning a new language in school, and that's just me literally restating the prompts so that we Neither we nor the reader are getting confused about what we're talking about here. So no, they don't have to be so serious. I wish I had a better word here um, than serious, but I'm also using this sentence to introduce the fact that we're transitioning from talking about the serious career idea to 
friendship. So we're going to go friendship, companionship, and even love. Right? Now what do I say after this? Say I'll open to those who can form these social bonds. Um, let's say across the language barrier. Now, I think this idea is missing something because technically you could just stick with people in your same in your same um, language. So let's see, friendship, companionship, and even love are open to those who can, all right, let's say greater, like just literally that, greater friendship, greater opportunities. You'd have to use carrots for this, so definitely think before you write when you're actually doing it in pen, but I have this ability, so I'm doing that. Great opportunities of friendship, companionship, and even love are open to those who can form these social bonds across a language barrier. That seems good, and I think they would understand that your point here is that you can make foreign friends, right? But let's go in a little bit more and say uh, former, because this is probably when you get out of school. So former language students um, stands a better chance. You know what? Let's introduce a statistic here, which we could do or we could not do because I don't think the voice of this needs statistics. It's not that scientific an issue. But if we just wanted to, I could show you how I would do that here. I might say studies show that, let's say over half of young people socialize um, This is not how they spell socialize, they want to add, okay. Socialize um, with people from different countries through the internet. That sounds believable slash even obvious. I don't think anybody should be able to Argue with that, half young people between ages 18, because we're talking dating, let's go with 18, to 25. Socialize with people from different countries through the internet. A former language student stands a better chance of finding meaningful connections really should be making meaningful connections, but okay. Um, with Let's just literally say with those who speak a different language. Because this is a moment where I'm sacrificing being fancy for being um, understood. So a formal language student stands a better chance of finding meaningful connections with those who speak a different language. Like literally that, I'm not getting too fancy with it. Um, I am literally pointing out that it could happen. You could find friends if you can speak Spanish, French, whatever. You just have a wider pool. Um, and if I wanted to add small words, it's kind of where I would skip a line. And I could even come back here and mention the idea of, okay, well, you have a wider dating pool. I might put that exact idea in. But for right now, in the interest of time and word count, and you're probably tired and stuff, I'm going to go ahead and put in a drawback. So right here, we're going to start with heavy signaling again that we are about to talk about a drawback. I'm just going to put in the word detractors. Right, so I hope everybody knows what detractors means. It literally is, according to Google, a person who disparages someone or something. So literally, that's just one word for anybody who would have a counter argument. So I'm gonna say 
detractors of this idea of mandatory um, mandatory second what, what do they say in the prompt let's use exactly that and just bring it back for them one foreign language are we gonna say that again mandatory foreign language study um, may we could say may argue but they already detract us so that almost sounds redundant so let's just cut straight to what they might say may question the practicality of this um, let's call it a pursuit um, Let's go ahead and say during valuable secondary school years, right? The sentence, is it too long? Detractors of this idea of ma mandatory foreign language study may question the practicality of this pursuit during valuable secondary school years. Now that seems fine. Okay. Um, let's say and be even more obvious about this. Will they ask, Thomas Hill, will, busy, busy, could be a stronger word. Um, let's say. Strong, stronger word for what, Panda? And busy. You know what, let's do busy. Let's do that. Everybody knows that word. Where they ask, will busy students find the time to, wow, to, I wanted to say pursue again, but we just use pursuit, so we can't do that. Where they ask, will busy students find the time to, let's go with incorporate, mm. spelling that right. A challenging subject like an entirely new language alongside their other pressing studies. I don't think that's an actual question, so I'm not going to put a question mark on it. Where they ask, will busy students find the time to do that? That's literally what they're asking. Hmm. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a word like, however, that shows that we're transitioning back to dealing with how I do. Okay. And we chose this particular benefit of it being easy and fulfilling. Um, I'm just going to say, however, this literally need not pose a challenge. And see, what I'm doing here is I'm just using kind of general language because this is the type of thing that you can reuse no matter what your prompt is, like literally to switch your hook back to your thing. However, this need not pose a challenge. The examiner is only going to see you write one time through one little lens, so you might as well go ahead and use that, right? So it doesn't have to pose a challenge. Why not? Is the next question that's obviously raises since we said that. So we're saying easy and fulfilling. Um, there are sufficient, a little bit of vocabulary, sufficient apps and digital resources. This is a moment of inspiration. I love to throw in apps. Um, whenever I can. We're gonna call them learners in their acquisition of foreign, I'm really just gonna keep beating that, foreign language skills. There are sufficient apps and digital resources to support learners in the acquisition of foreign language skills process of learning can be easy and even fun 
four young students. Right? Literally that. So if we check it, we have one paragraph introduction, one paragraph first point, third paragraph next point. The fourth paragraph is doing the um, counter argument, but then it's coming right back here. However, clear signaling to talk about apps and digital resources, and it can be easy and even fun. So that's it. We put all those points in there, and now I'm ready for my outro. And so a good outro basically restates the main idea that was seen in the beginning. So I said I dug myself into this hole. Languages are like keys. So let's use the same unlocking um, concept and see what we come up with. I might say that I'm going to say something about the benefits far outweighing the drawbacks. So let's say the... Numerous benefits of um, securing, securing, that's going to get me in trouble. Let's not say that. Having a new language at one's command far outweigh, which we're practically just dating that because we decided to, but that's fine. Far away the drawbacks. This again is my attempt to signal to the examiner in case it was unclear that I am supporting this idea. The vast um, world, let's say, of opportunities that are what is another word for unlocked is what I'd be asking now, but I might just say unlocked again. Um, opened, revealed. Um, I'm going to say unlocked. Unlocked to share young people who Oh, I can't be too redundant here. The numerous benefits of having a new language of one's command far outweigh the drawbacks. The vast world of opportunities that are unlocked to young people who... Let's say are multilingual. Let's go a few vocabulary points still. What about these, oh, this vast world of opportunities? Um, what do I say? Vast world of opportunities that are unlocked to young people are multilingual. Is say too promising to be ignored. Again, that's like a kind of general statement, but it sounds okay. And now I'm going to put one final statement that restates the thing. I might even go super heavy and be like. I want to say, I know you guys don't like when um, you use the word I like saying something like this is why I support mandatory. Um, let's say mandatory foreign language study in secondary schools should or is worth the, I want to say effort. Let's say is a worthy what pursuit goal. It's not really any of those things. Um, like status, something like that. Now. Just me, personally, as a writer, I'm bad at writing conclusions, and this is the type of thing where I would spend a long time trying to find this exact last word. Let's say it's a worthy goal for our schools. And examiners are in that, um, or 
yeah. All right, let's say it's the schools. Could have said something like curriculum or what have you, but that's what's up. All right, so that would be my um, essay. I could, because I have the ability to copy and paste this. Let me just track the word count for you real quick, and I will let you know. I feel like this felt, besides just words, if you wanted to put words for its sake, it felt as if I had succeeded in getting the point across, which is the thing that's most important to me. Apparently, this is 314 words already, though. So, literally, you can't go too much more without overshooting it, it would seem. Okay, so that's what I did. I think I have one or two little typos in here, but let's try reading it from the top. Well, people have asked me before, do I think this needs a title? I wouldn't usually, but you could put one in just to be safe. I like to title things generic. Um, or you could even you could even go in this hard and be like, benefits of foreign language study. School studies are led. Eh, that's a weak title, but it'll do under the circumstances. You understand what did I do? You understand what I mean and where I'm going with this in terms of rights. There we go. So that's how that would look essentially. Literally, that's how much time I would have taken to read, write, and plan that. And I promise you that one, as you can see by the word limits and the fact that we answer the question, you don't have to do too much more. Two, the mental power that you'll have left after like more than an hour and a half of writing other things before, even like literally your hand might be cramping at this point, plan to do something that's on the simpler side and gets the question answered, okay? All right, so let me read this from the top um, so you can hear how the flow was. Um, this is called the benefits of foreign language studies. Languages are like keys. They unlock the worlds for those fortunate enough to possess them. This is why it's such a wonderful idea for all students to study at least one foreign language during their secondary years. The benefits of acquiring the skill of speaking a foreign tongue cannot be overstated. One of the most outstanding benefits for a student of foreign language is gaining the ability to compete for jobs in foreign markets. Adding, I am fluent in XYZ language to a resume is sure to impress potential employers. Later in their careers, this valuable skill will continue to make them sought after employees. Naturally, not all the benefits of learning a new language in school are so serious. Greater opportunities for friendship, companionship, and even love are open to those who can form these social bonds across a language barrier. Studies show that over half of young people between ages 18 to 25 socialize with people from different countries through the internet. A former language student stands a better chance of finding meaningful connections with those who speak a different language. Detractors of this idea of mandatory foreign language study may question the practicality of this pursuit during valuable secondary school years. Where, they ask, will busy students find the time to incorporate a challenging subject like an entirely new language alongside their other pressing studies? However, this need not pose a challenge. There are sufficient apps and digital resources to support learners in their acquisition of foreign language skills. The process of learning can be easy and even fun for young students. The numerous benefits of having a new language at one's command far outweigh the drawbacks. The vast world of opportunities that are unlocked to young people who are multilingual is too promising to be ignored. Mandatory foreign language study in secondary schools is a worthy goal for our schools. All right, and at this point, I'm hoping <laughs> that the examiner will read that and they will sound or think that it sounded smooth enough for them to just award me the majority of the marks. I could pause for feedback. Um, Adam, how do you think that went? How do you think it came across? Yeah, I think you followed your plan pretty, pretty closely. Mm -hmm. And nice job. Um, adding in the the counterpoint it was a bit clearer than mine because you dedicated practically an entire paragraph to it 
And you didn't go over by much. I went over by more. So I think okay. it's, it's, it's pretty contained. I could nitpick a couple of uh, vocabs. Do. I, I'd switch out and, 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 and so on. But I mean, all right, let, let me see. Let me try to nitpick. It, hmm. it it's pretty it's pretty much golden. So it's nitpicking is just you know finding what might be uh, possible spots to I don't know reconsider. Yeah. But it, it's I think it, I mean the flow when, is pretty it's pretty good. Yeah, when when I was um, learning to write those years ago, I think the favorite um, statement of the teacher was writing is rewriting, and I think we all can find something about our writing that would be better if we had more opportunities to go over it and it just gets mm. smoother and smoother. But the thing is in exam conditions, when you really have, what do they say? 45 minutes. And I promise you, you might've stolen about five of those minutes for the summary or something. You yeah. have about 40 minutes to do this. This is, you know, one yeah. kind of realistic and it's not mm. too bad, you know? Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's, it's more than not too bad. I think it's, you have solid points. The organization is good. But yeah. the, the more you comb over a piece of writing, the more things you're going to want to tweak naturally. But in, in the exam time, I don't think you're going to get like the picture-perfect essay. So something that is solid and clear is really all you can hope for. I, I don't think any teacher is going to write an error-free essay under exam under exam stress but yeah. the points are clear and even if there are a couple of things i'd tweak it's not as if they're like deal breakers so yeah it's, it's pretty smooth it's pretty smooth right. yeah, um, could i could i read it from, from you could you definitely today? could yeah um let me see if i can uh, get that on screen for you huh yeah, it's pretty it's pretty clear yeah pretty okay. clear on screen by reading it, I might uh, be able to un unlock a little, a little bit, a little bit more feedback. So languages are like keys. Pretty nice hook. The un I, I, I like the use of the the dash. It's not often used, but it's a nice little device. It's, it's a nice little punctuation mark. The dash there. Languages yeah, are like. If keys. you didn't want to risk the um, dash, you literally could just make it another sentence, right? I that. think the, the, the dash is better. I like the dash. The dash? Okay, let's put the dash back. Yeah. Oh, if, not, if not the dash, I'd use a semicolon, which can look a little bit weird sometimes, even when it's correct. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I like, I like the dash. Yeah. So languages are like keys. They unlock the world for those fortunate enough to possess them. Nice hook. This is why it's such a wonderful idea for all students to study at least one foreign language during their secondary years. The benefits of acquiring the skill of speaking a foreign, a foreign tongue, nice switch in vocabulary, cannot be overstated. So I, I noticed in your intro, like like with mine, my previous mm -hmm. essay, you don't list explicitly the points you're going to discuss. No, I don't. Yeah, no. That, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's fine because we only have that many words. So being concise sometimes you have to sacrifice being fancy and just get to it yeah uh, yeah all right look at the next paragraph one I... of the most outstanding benefits for a student of for a student of i guess a foreign language or foreign languages is getting the ability to comp to compete for jobs in foreign markets that's a nice point adding i am fluent in xyz language I don't know if I would I would write X Y Z language. I I know it. You're trying to find a generic thing, mm -hmm. but I just give an example. Adding, for example, I am fluent in Spanish to a resume. True. It's short. It's short to, yeah, and then it kind of counts a bit more as an example in terms of persuasive device. So try I, that. I, for example, I am fluent in Spanish or. Just Anything. Spanish. We'll go with that. Spanish is fine. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's sure to impress potential employers. Yeah. Later in their careers, this valuable skill will continue to make them 
sought after employees. I think sought after here could be hyphenated for clarity, just being super nitpicky. Yeah. And yeah. honestly, these are the things I go back and change in the five minutes you have left in the end. I'd put right, a dash right, in between. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Naturally, not all of the benefits of learning a new language in school are so serious. Serious. I, I don't like know that what word. word I want to use, but I don't want to use serious. I know. Uh, let me think. I was like strict, rigid. Yeah, uh, rigid formal. is better. Uh, but then you like the benefits. Is it rigid? Uh, not all of the benefits are so. It's like academic, but not just academic, because also job related. And I didn't want to say practical because I didn't want to take away from this point that it's practical. Right, because you're not saying it's Im they're impractical. Um, yeah, because you know friendship no. matters too. But like, no. and then I was like reaching for bigger words like strident type of thing, but that's literally I have mm. to go to Google to define that, and that sounds like the kind of word that I would advise people to stay away from. Mm. And you don't want to see you don't want to use a word like crucial because you, you don't want to marginalize the point coming next. That's coming next. Yep. Uh all right. And I thought, how uh, much of an impact is using Sirius gonna have on the whole thing? So I thought, yeah, all right, maybe Sirius right. is fine. Yeah. Uh, if I think for an hour, I'll find it, but we don't have uh. an hour in the exam. <laughs> all right. So greater opportunities for Friendship, companionship, and even love are open to those who can form these social bonds across a language barrier. That's nice. Language barrier is a nice vocab for this topic. It's nice to throw that in. Studies show that over half of young people, okay, stats, uh, over, I'd say 50%, it's, it's the same meaning, but just for it to mm -hmm. sound a bit more staty. <laughs> literally though but i find yeah. if this was a more like scientific topic or it really all required right. research maybe mm. but eh, over half That's, all right all right yeah all right no problem just a personal <laughs> preference you know mm -hmm. so studies show that over half of young people between ages 18 and 25 i like the specific age range it sounds more more like like research uh, socialize with people from different countries through the internet nice a former language student stands a better chance of finding meaningful connections with those who speak a different language. Yeah, good, good. Detractors of this idea. Detractors is a nice word to introduce that counterpoint. Yeah, I like that. Detractors of this idea of mandatory foreign language study may question the practicality of this pursuit during valuable secondary school years. Valuable. It's a nice word, I indispensable. Okay, valuable is fine. I'm just, I'm just picking for no reason. Where they ask, I like this kind of this question here. Where they ask, will busy students find the time to incorporate a challenging subject like an entirely new language, alongside their other pressing studies? However, this needs not pose a challenge. There are, there are maybe I'd say there are a wide selection of apps and other digital resources, since apps are digital resources, mm -hmm. to support learners in their acquisition of foreign language skills. Nice. The process of learning can be easy and fun, even for young learn young students. Yeah, nice. Even fun. There you go. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. easy and even fun, yeah. And uh, their conclusion, the numerous benefits of having a new language at one's command. That's a nice way of um, switching around instead of just saying learning a new language. Yeah. Having a new language at one's command far outweigh the drawbacks. The vast world of opportunities. Is it vast world is or are? I don't know. The, the vast world of opportunities that is unlocked. Yeah, technically, it sounds weird because I said opportunities after, but I think it should be world is unlocked. Yeah. So, so. the vast world of opportunities that is unlocked to young people who are multilingual is too promising to be ignored. Nice. A bit persuasive there. Mandatory foreign language study in secondary schools is a worthy goal for our students. Yeah. Yeah, Panda. This is solid. Yeah. Solid. Yeah, so solid. 
if um we have a second i'd love to i missed all the comments or anything thanks for the people who supported i um agree with this thing about thinking about the differently able students that is something that would be a drawback if you were doing the drawback side mm. Mm -hmm. all good points yeah i might go back and read these comments but i appreciate you guys pitching in um yeah mm. so so i just wanted to take a little look at because i don't think a lot of people see this this is the mock scheme mm -hmm. from the syllabus where they literally tell you for section d what they are going to be, let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, literally what they're going to be. Are you seeing this, the complete thing? Not quite. Yeah, we're seeing. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, and so. Myself off with it, maybe. That's all right. I just want us to be able to focus in on what they're actually going to be looking for, content and arguments. So I don't know if anybody wants to Screenshot this, but I could kind of go through it. So for section D, they're going to be judging your content in terms of the argument and comment by the selection of information and details being relevant to the focus of the argument. The arguments showing a clear sense of the writer's awareness of audience. So make sure you sound like you're talking to the same person. The writer must use a register and tone appropriate for the audience selected, right? The writer's purpose must be clearly linked to audience needs. Um, so to inform, persuade, convince of a point of view, or to persuade or convince, right? Supporting details that are used to develop the arguments must fulfill one or more of the following functions. They either need to expand, explain, illustrate, like with anecdotes, the main arguments. So don't just have a point in there for no reason, is what I feel like they mean. Then F, in illustrating, Explaining or expanding the arguments, the writer must make use of a range of strategies, for example, defining, showing causes and effects, making meaningful comparisons. All right. The writer must argue from a consistent point of view. This means the writer must anticipate the opposition's arguments, but must not contradict his or her own argument positions. So you put that counter in there without destroying your own argument, right? So onto organization, logical development and reasoning. They just want these couple of points. The writer must present the details in a logical sequence that maintains the focus of the arguments. The logical sequence of ideas must be clear within sentences, across sentences and paragraphs and between paragraphs. So just mm. make sure the logic keeps flowing, right? So like blend the ideas together. Um, I don't know why I wanted to say like foundation, you don't want your face and your neck to be a different color, that's random. Anyway, um, number <laughs> two C, the conclusion the writer draws must arise naturally and logically from the arguments presented. Okay, so area two, I'm not even really sure how this breakdown is, but other things that they'll be, oh no, that's literally what it is, understanding and expression the way they're always checking this. All right, fine, some more expression here. Correct use of structures of language. So they want these complete sentences. They want it to be clear, meaningful. They have to be effective and appropriate transitions between sentences and paragraphs. So I think that really means just keep the ideas together. Um, so like one idea per paragraph. I say one idea per paragraph, basically how I did it that, but appropriate transitions. Mm -hmm. Subject and verb agreements, you see I just fixed some of that. It um, mm -hmm. needed to be is versus are. Pronouns and the antecedents, this is using she and her correctly. There must be consistency in the use of tense, right? So just keep it the same tense. I don't think many people are going to have a problem with that. Yeah, maybe mechanics. for the story, but not here. Yeah, not here, nah. So your spelling and punctuation, they want to see correct and paragraphing. So this is the grid that they'll actually be looking at, give or take, to make the assessment on question five. You want to stay somewhere in the superiority and competence zone, so what we see on the screen now, in order to get these marks, right? So basically, they just want to see that you're excellent at managing the arguments and the contents, like we just talked about, and excellent organization of the arguments and the details, like we just talked about and excellent, effective, and error-free use of language as indicated above. So essentially, basically just doing a good job on that is what you need to do. It always comes down to that in the end. But if anybody wanted to be technical and see just how they'll be either gaining or losing marks, this is a cool thing to check out. So 
Hope anybody who got a screenshot or wanted a screenshot got it. Right? So just don't yeah, be yeah. so bad at this that they have to give you <laughs> fewer than six marks for this and four marks on that side. You don't want that. Right? Yeah. So cutting back to um, persuasive, that is what I did for that. And yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty nice. Yeah, if I were to do the opposing argument to this, it would be mm. like the same strategy I would use, but I would just literally change out the points and expand them. I would have to find another drawback, and I'd find a way to place the um, other benefits in between mm -hmm. here, same way, right? Yeah. So I might have chosen... Um, can make foreign friends, or maybe can get jobs, because I think that was the strongest um, point I had there. So I might have said, okay, well, maybe they could get jobs. If they were doing this foreign language study, but I would have made another drawback. Um, I would have chosen this, not everybody's going to use it for employability, and I put that down here. And those ideas go together and flow nicely. So that's why I would have done that and just found another drawback. Um, and someone said that um, it might be tough for students who have ADHD or whatever. So let's say it's tough for already struggling students might have been a cool drawback there. It takes time away from other more valuable subjects. While they could get jobs, not everybody is actually going to use foreign language to gain employability in the future. And you could literally do it either way. So I hope that everybody understood why I did what I did. I hope that these um, ideas of how often I reminded the examiner what I'm talking about, literally with this, this is a wonderful idea. And so on. I don't want any confusion, though. And then remember, detractors might say is a great way to introduce the counter arguments when you come mm -hmm. to it, right? So yeah, short yeah. and sweet, and that's how I would do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Panda style. It's pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, pretty good. How much juice do we have left in the stream? How much juice do we have left in the stream? Give me a percentage in the chat how much juice you have left because I have 99% juice remaining. I've only used 1% of my energy so far. Definitely Android, definitely not an, an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, not an iPhone. I'd be, I'd be at some negative numbers by now. So let me know how much juice you guys have left. If you have enough juice, we can keep running. 40%. Come on, man. What are you talking about? Right now I'm getting I'm getting some new. I just got like two or three essays from, from Gavin, the same teacher who joined yesterday with some feedback. Yesterday? Joined for the, the section B. Sending me a couple of stuff to show you guys, and I have one more to show you. Come on. You have exams, man. You should be at one billion, trillion, zillion, quintillion. Google Plex percent juice. Juice running over. That is the answer I'm looking for. Not. Yeah, that's the only right answer in the stream right now. Juice running over. Panda, come on. Where where where, where did 20% go? <laughs> All right. Um how about we take a 60 second break? I want to come back. I'll Panda, do you have more samples for today? Um, no, I was writing them on the fly, so that that was All a right. sample. My right, other sample fine. would have been yeah. Yeah, yeah. The other version you... of this. I think I have yeah, a video I did. That one was a speech. And it's the same question from the syllabus. So if you wanted to see how else I would have done this, which that speech contained a little bit more getting into a voice, a tone, and a character, because they were all in this, hey, pretend you're somebody on a school board, I think. Mm. Um, so, yeah. And yeah. You can take a look at that. But, yeah. All right. So, yeah. so what we'll do, we'll take a short break, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, two minutes or so, and then 
haven't talked um spoken about the book yet young boy mm-hmm. i'm in i'm in seasick mode <laughs> All right, so we'll take a very, very short break. I don't want you guys to go fall asleep or get distracted by Coco Melon and cartoons. I'm joking, I'm joking. I hope and so. When we come back, I am going to show you uh, my an essay I wrote for the 2018 paper. And then we're going to look mm-hmm. at Panda's speech. And Gavin just emailed me either his samples or some of his star students sample like persuasive pieces you can look at those because what we want to do this is like the last paper two session i'm doing i want to make sure that you have enough you know enough samples in your mind enough enough writing um in, enough what is the word i'm looking for i don't know it seems i have less than 100 percent truth left but i want to make sure that you can see enough writing enough good writing so you can have a handle on what good writing looks like and pick up on some vocabulary you can use some techniques some nice phrases panda always has some good phrases to introduce certain ideas and and so on so you guys um, we're giving you a lot of tools a lot of vocabs a lot of techniques so let's take a two minute break and then when we come back we're going to work about three more um questions all right so two minutes and i'll be back so drink some water take a bathroom break take it easy take a breather yeah okay i'll check my email in the meantime and get some samples ready for you guys yeah 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 all right banners we are now taking a two minute break.
All right, are we back in business? Back in business, back in business. Are we back in business, guys? Panda Panda, are you here? Yes, I am here. I am back in business. Bachelor Power is probably up to 85. This okay, time. okay. My, my, That's something. I, mine went back up from 99 to 100, so I'm good again. Mm -hmm. I, I lost 1% in all that time. Yeah, I my my old time days of gaming from mm -hmm. sundown to sun up. Yeah, I, I'm used to I'm used to it. This is like gaming for me. This is this is the new gaming for me now. That's true. This is, this is a game to me. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it's not a game for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Getting past yeah. it is one of the best feelings ever, though. Oh, yeah. And even in the exam room, you realize, one, all of the studying came in clutch. Like, good thing you did it. But then when you walk out, it's just like, oh, it's over. And mm. it's just as good to get through it and get to it as it is to not be needing to do it at all. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um. By the way, Gavin has joined us. Welcome, Gavin. Gavin was here for the section B. You remember Gavin Panda? Gavin yes, was here. I no was here a little bit for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi, so, Gavin. Good morning, Gavin. Gavin. Thanks for being here, man. So you 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 sent me two samples that we're gonna check out a bit later. Those are from your students. Yeah, those are from students. Um, a colleague, one from a colleague student, and one from my group. That's cool. I love seeing how and what other people write, because you know a lot of times it's not like somebody's a good writer or a bad writer, but it's just amazing how people will do something different, different from what you would have done. They're just seeing it differently. So I'm excited. I also always appreciate like some students last year, they sent me what they were practicing and then I saw they got the ones and the twos after. So it's nice to know what it would look like when you're at that level to succeed. So I'm looking forward. Adam, are we frozen? Are we on break? I Definitely frozen from my side. Yeah, we lost him. I'm sure you'll be back. Internet is probably reconnecting.
Hey guys, can you hear me again? Can you hear me? Are we back online? Yes, I can definitely hear you. I can see oh, you. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but my everything just 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 disappeared. The stream mm -hmm. just crashed. I think Gavin brought in some bad luck. Where's Gavin? Oh, he was here just now. Oh man. Uh, let's see if I can get him to re rejoin. Mm -hmm. Just message him real quick. Yeah. All right. Saying... Yeah, these things happen. <laughs> they really uh, do. These things happen. Like, honestly. Oh, the longer the stream, the more likely it is that something at some point will go wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Let me let me just get things back up. It'll only take me a moment. You can consider it a slightly increased break time. That's yeah. true. Some people are probably still trying to get back. Oh, oh man. Yeah. So you were saying that... Um... Gavin was going to bring us some samples to look at, written by, was it past students, I think he said? Current students, I think, yeah. Ah, okay. Okay, Gavin is back in. So so it means we have, I think in total, we have, we have four more papers that we want to look at. I have one more, you have one more, Panda. But I guess mm -hmm. we can look at um, Gavin's student samples first. Since we've been looking at our our writing for a little while, hundred percent. I think that's a good idea. We'll, then we'll wrap up with our stuff again and talk strategy one last time. All right. So let me grab one of one of Gavin's Gavin's students' essays, and mm -hmm. Gavin will will take the lead on the commentary here because I I see some feedback. Some comments here that might be Gavin's um, mm -hmm. feedback to that student, right? Uh, so let me just do a quick share. Um, and they're looking for this PDF, Persuasion 2. And we're going to be squeezed. Well, well, I, I trust that they, you'll be able to navigate the partnership here. Uh, the, the feedback, though, isn't from you. Uh, okay, phone. okay. Yeah. All right. The writing is a little, it looks very scanned, but I think we, we might be able to read. Okay. Let me make this as large as I can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or maybe work with the other one. Touch, touch, touch on the other one. All right, let me check the other one. The other one is a Word doc. All right, let me share. Let me share that one. This one isn't too bad enough, but let's check the word one first and see. Okay. Chef one is smooth. I will work with that first. Uh, that, uh, and I have I have so many samples from my students, you know, from my master class, but I I didn't ask beforehand if I could share them, so that's a pity. Yeah. Because they, they have some incredible stuff, man. Incredible stuff. All right, boom. This is Word. Let me get this in a full screen. All right, let me just do a quick, quick change. I can't look at anything except Times New Roma. Mm -hmm. All right, and I think we can get a full screen mode. I think we should, just for the comfort of the viewers, change this to a landscape page. Then we can zoom all the way up. And this should be looking good. All right, just to make the paragraphs a bit clearer, I'll do the indents so we can see the paragraphing. All right, mm -hmm. let's take a look at this. So since this is your territory, Gavin, you want to read this one and then we can drop some feedback. After the reading is done? Yes, no problem. I think 
I'm to remember the year. I think this is the January 2023 paper uh, where okay. we have a copy of that prompt here. I actually haven't have... seen this question. Me neither. Mm -hmm. Tell me the prompt. I'll type it out here so we can we can reference it. Because I don't have that paper. Gavin has all of the goods. People in the chat, y'all good? Y'all been a little quiet. You're good, you're good. Are you seeing well? Are you still awake? Are you grasping some some ideas or techniques? Keep the chat alive, man. Keep the chat active. Don't fall asleep on us. Okay, good, good. You guys are alive. That's important. Steve. It wouldn't be much of a live if they weren't, huh? Ha <laughs> ha, nice one. Yeah, yeah. It's a bad joke. It's fine. <laughs> All right, so... Just to refresh my memory, we're taking a look now at a response to a prompt, section D, that one of Gavin's students has done recently, right? Mm -hmm. January 2023. So the most recent past paper. Okay. An important paper. It's pretty recent. So I guess Gavin is looking for the prompt. Yes, I am. Um, uh... You're getting four hours of sleep, young boy. That's too much sleep for exam time, man. All right, so this is a prompt. Um, um, okay. Um, here, I think. Uh, the use of social media is negatively affecting the lives of young people. The, hmm? use, of, the use of social media is negatively affecting the lives of young people. Yeah. Yes, that, that's a prompt. Uh, write an essay giving your views on this statement. Write an essay giving your views on this statement. Right out the gates. Those are just fighting words for me. But um, like this is a prompt <laughs> I could get into. But all right, let's see what they had to say. All right, so I'll just put this up, up, up top here so we can easily check back. All right, so take it away, Gavin. <clears throat> Do I read it or? or... Yeah, man, I can read. And, um, and then, yes. I'm not sure if you want to read the entire thing and then we talk, or as you go along, we can point out okay. um, things here right. and there. Okay. Uh, what effect do you think technology has on young people? Even if you live under a rock, there's no way of escaping technology. And its degenerative effects are evident among our vulnerable youths. Therefore, I firmly agree that technology is contributing to the decline in values among young people as it is a distraction. It exposes them to inappropriate content and negative role models. Mm. All right. So, so we're seeing. So this has to, um, these are... I think maybe two students had worked with a teacher. Maybe a, a last minute kind of um, composition here. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. them. Uh, so we're seeing here and uh, that there's an attempt at a hook. Um, yeah. What is what you think young people um, technology has on young people? And there's a strong statement complementing that hook. Uh, even if you live under a rock, there is no way escaping technology and its degenerative effects on um, are evident among our young people. All right, so I think that the student here is trying to contextualize the, the issue, which is mm -hmm. technology's impact on the values of young people. All right, so the mm -hmm. specific um, audience that 
is being affected or based on the prompt the specific audience uh, that is being affected by technology uh, is young people, all right? Then we're seeing the position clearly stated. Therefore, I firmly agree that technology is contributing to the decline in values and the reasons are also presented. It's a distraction, it's, it, it exposes them to inappropriate content and negative role models. So we see clearly how the essay will be developed. Yeah. Concise, but effective intro, I think. Okay. Yeah. No problems from my end. A nice little hook with a rhetorical question. And then I follow that up, making your stance clear and you briefly state the three points we're going to get into. That's good for me. All right. First, do you not think that the use of technology can be a major distraction for youths? Do you not think that young people man manage their do you think that young people manage their time wisely? The value of time management is eroded when young people spend excessive amount of time doing nothing positive on applications like Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok while their schoolwork suffers. Is this worthwhile? Ooh. So many rhetorical questions. Do you think it's overdone? It, it could be. Use what a rhetorical I'm, question. Yeah, while I find it to be an effective strategy, uh, in this particular case, it could be a bit overdone. Or what could happen is that a concluding sentence is added uh, just to overall this particular um, body paragraph. Yeah, because this, to me, sounds like a long, long hook. Yeah. Um, for the body, I would want a little bit more substance in terms of explanation or evidence. Uh, but the rhetorical questions individually are pretty nice. But I'm wondering if we need so many. So let, let me just take a, take a quick uh, take a read. First, mm -hmm. do you not think that the use of technology can be a major distraction for our youths? All right, let's say we keep that one. Yeah. The follow-up one here, do you think that young people manage their time? I, I could probably merge these historical questions into one overarching question and then take it from there with evidence. The evidence. Uh, for, uh, for example, what do you think young people spend eight hours a day doing on their smartphones? Or something to, 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 that, to that effect. That we could work in even a statistic. Young, young, young person spend eight to nine hours per day on their smartphones. What do you think they are doing with all this time? Question mark. And then we go on to talk about what they are doing and maybe one of the negative effects. Because I think this many rhetorical questions might, might be overkill, at least for me personally. Yeah, I think it's overkill because for one thing, when you look at it, the second paragraph is entirely questions, right? But also, I am somebody who is on the other side of this thought because I'm like, mm. I actually don't think that it's a major distraction for our youths and so on. So for me, like literally hearing it, after that first, first do you think that the use of technology can be a major distraction for our youths? I am ready to hear some evidence to convince me over to the other side versus just um, more questions that I already actually don't really agree with. I so agree. Just yeah. I agree. Yeah. So so what could happen here uh, is the inclusion of some form of evidence, research evidence, yes. statistical data um, from some established mm -hmm. institution, even if this is made up. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so I I remember when this was being worked on. It was an after school um, session, and they were quickly putting this together. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As a yeah. teacher is trying to provide some guidance. Um, so this wasn't anything that was edited or, or um, any form of feedback given for improvement. So I said yeah, that's man. an ideal opportunity to show. Uh, but what we are seeing here is a series of rhetorical questions uh, which, could, which could work. But mm. to improve this paragraph, the student would definitely need to provide more compelling evidence that technology actually is a major distraction for our, our youth. Yeah. I, I, 
Yeah. Mm. Continue. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Go ahead, man. All right. So, could we improve this paragraph or do we move along? All right. Let's see if we can actually improve it. So, we want to balance out. So, let, let's say we keep. So, uh, writing is a stylistic thing. You know, each writer has their own voice. So, if mm. this writer wants to use rhetorical question as their main device, I won't take that away. But let's yes. say we balance it out with some statements. Balance the questions with, with statements. Yes. Uh, so, uh, let's... Tr- yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have... All right, so this is an approach, right? Because we know that mm-hmm. this is persuasive in nature. We have to ensure mm-hmm. that the students make use of the persuasive devices uh, mm-hmm. and a variety of these, right? So... Uh, one thing that I've suggested is that sometimes instead of presenting the point or the topic sentence in the form of a statement, it could be directed as a question, right? just to ensure that the persuasive element is maintained and that mm-hmm. they are using mm-hmm. other devices. Um, apart from that, uh, the students are also encouraged to use a variety of text structures. So the cause and effect uh, mm-hmm. compared um, comparison, the use of contrast, uh, just yes, to statistics. Adver- yes, just to add variety to the response and to make the argument uh, a bit more compelling. So here it is that we have uh, a topic sentence in the form of a question. All right, and we're seeing here where the student is suggesting that there is a direct correlation between the use of technology and distraction among young people. Mm-hmm. So we need to provide evidence now to support that. So I think the statistics could come in or maybe citing some um, acclaimed insti- studies from an acclaimed institution. And this could be yeah. public. Mm-hmm. So, so first, let's, let's maybe consolidate the, the questions. And mm-hmm. maybe we can merge these into either a double question or one a, a weighted question, a question that has within it a stance. You know, sometimes you ask a question, but, you know, the answer is obvious. And that's yes. what makes it rhetorical. Uh, for example, we could say, because I like the examples. I don't want to get rid of the examples. Um, do, do you really think mindlessly scrolling through Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok eight hours a day is the best use, is the best use of time? That's a rhetorical question with the examples, and the question suggests that the answer is no. Right? Mm-hmm. And then no, we we'll go on to provide maybe a statistic or some kind of cause and effect about you know what this time wasting will, will result in. Let's focus on studies or whatever to mm-hmm. balance out the, the question. Yeah, we'll that's definitely that that's approach. definitely a good um way to blend those questions because when you say, do you think that mindlessly scrolling for eight hours at a time and you start with that, I, as a person on the other side of the argument, I'm out here like, what makes you think that I'm scrolling mindlessly for eight hours at a time? So this is a great place to put in a statistic. Recent studies from somewhere show that young people spend as much as eight to 10 hours on social media, like 80% of them. So like, okay, fine. Yeah. That's why you think that. And then so yeah, it's so like that, an actual basis for the argument and not just you kind of raging almost to yourself that, hey, this is bad, but like, why is it bad? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So in the question, I, I wouldn't necessarily put the the time span or any form of statistical data. I just use okay. that as evidence to support. So we just make a claim mm-hmm. um, in the uh, topic sentence there. Uh, use the examples like Instagram, Twitter, and all of those uh, to supplement. So do we start with the stat or with uh, the, the question? I think we start with the question and then use the statistics um, as evidence now to support the claim. Mm-hmm. All right. So after the question, research shows something, right? Do you think that mindlessly scrolling through Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok is the um, we could improve the word best here by um, using a more forceful adjective is the most uh what could we say uh like not, not, not really most efficient but 
Or rewarding. Okay, most rewarding. Is the most rewarding use of a young person's time. And what does the research show? The research is going to show how, how long the average teen spends. Yeah, yes. On the apps. The average... What do we say this? The average... Young person. I wouldn't put teenager person. because we, 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 are, we are actually delimiting the, the, the audience. I, I don't yeah. think that's young people. Yeah. Youth seems to say young person up here. Yeah. So research shows that the average youth, the average youth spends maybe give a range between and I said eight and ten hours. Um yeah, that's Sorry. yeah, that's what you had before. So that seems good. And also I find that's a believable statistic, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's believable. Research shows that the average youth spends spends eight to ten hours per day um, uh, doing what? Um, browsing, perusing, um, simply on social media <laughs> sites, etc. Um, on social media sites. Yeah, I don't know if it's like a good idea to put like an opinion because that sounds like bias almost. I know it's still supposed to be persuasive, but like you don't want to say they spend that amount of time wasting it because like that's too opinionated. So I might have just said browsing. Um, yeah, or we'll have browsing. a screen time of eight to ten hours. That's not bad either. Again, with yeah, the screen because, time. Um, they just have a screen time of eight to ten hours, because I mean we already said they're mindlessly scrolling above, so maybe have a screen time of eight to ten hours if you could work that in. That's not too bad. All right. So research shows that the average youth has it should be has right. The average youth has a I don't I'm not sure where word is correcting the correct thing. It should be has. Research shows that the average youth has, uh, okay, youth can be plural or singular, so the word is confused, has a daily screen time of eight to 10 hours. So now we need to relate this back to the point of too much screen time is a bad thing, right? Mm -hmm. How do we get there? I'm looking at the rhetorical questions for inspiration because I want to maintain this writer's voice as much as possible, even while editing. I say they firmly agree that technology is contributing to the decline in values because it's a distraction, inappropriate content, and negative role models. So technically, those might have been the points that they were trying to raise at some point. And well, I haven't heard what comes next to, so... Hmm? So distraction start, should be... Distraction the focus, is probably... I guess, then, yeah. Paragraph one. Yes, yes, it will be. So distracting from what? So I guess we need to talk about something like schoolwork and how schoolwork is suffering due to um, too much time being spent on social media. I guess that would be like the, the point of paragraph one. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, that would, that would be a point. Um, it could be distracting from reality too, but I, yeah. I think it'd be easy for the, the student to talk about distraction from... Uh, responsibilities of a student but but remember not all young people are not all youths are students so we can't mm -hmm. limit it to so studies and interpersonal relationships right yes. both of these things so far when we spend too much time on the phone yes yeah, yeah. so we could use yeah so one of the developmental um points would mm -hmm. could be focused on its impact on a student's education, whilst another um, could zoom in on the interpersonal uh, skills or social skills. Or you could just okay. make it about this person in general and make it like personal development suffers. So whether yeah. that's yeah. hygiene, working out, I don't know, but just literally mm. everything else in real life. 
or just interacting with others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so how do we structure the sentence? This excessive, like the word excessive here. I think fixation uh, is all right for that. It's good vocabulary. Excessive fixation mm -hmm. on, instead of repeating social media, um, want to spin it in a negative light. So any diction that indicates uh, that it's not a good place to spend eight to 10 hours. This excessive fixation on, uh, I mean, this isn't super um, negative, but the, the digital space, a bit more neutral. This excessive fixation on the digital space, um, or platforms on these digital platforms. Okay, that's good. More precise on these digital platforms lead to or result in uh, uh, the, um, uh, digital platform. Um, it's counter it's counterproductive. And then I guess we could say counterproductive to. I guess we can lead directly into one of the issues. It's counterproductive to the maintenance of interpersonal relationships or something like that. All right, that's legit. Yeah. Like it mentions the points in terms of distraction and it leaves you. A development to the report. To the ah, development. Yeah. Development is good. Critical, yeah, of critical um, interpersonal development of. Critical. I don't know. Critical. Uh, wholesome. Uh, yeah, wholesome could be used. Wholesome, maybe. Interpersonal relationships. So this excessive fixation on these digital platforms is counterproductive to the development of wholesome interpersonal relationships. All right. Uh, Still need more juice for this paragraph. Successive fixation is just a counterproductive physical relationships. Come on, Kevin Panda. But because Kevin. what, oh, uh, what I'm thinking, yeah, what, huh? what I'm thinking, yeah, what I'm thinking here is that you don't necessarily want it. Um, the the paragraph to be loaded. I think the the this ideas could be simply expressed, but the argument is still compelling. And what I'm seeing here is that the student is saying that uh, young people mm. spend majority of their time on these platforms, right? And these mm. can have uh, crippling effects on their interpersonal skills. So maybe what we what could be mentioned here are some of these effects, um, some of these yeah. specific effects, or if it is that it impacts their academic progress, um, you can. Uh, so you mentioned crippling effect. So it also has a crippling effect on because we're looking at the, the amount of time they spend on screen it distracts from the inter interpersonal relationships it also has a critical effect on we get into the studies the academics that's why i choose to be fake like i would say i would have said something like their developments because technically speaking we didn't plan this ourselves but if you just look at that sentence up here it exposes mm -hmm. them to inappropriate content is the next thing we're trying to bridge into. So if you just say the development and then you continue into inappropriate content, um, that might work out okay. What kind of development? Literally uh, the development. All right. I the choose to be vague in these moments because we were so expressive in the other moments so we could, you know. I All think right. a part of the thing for me is I don't know they have this secondly, I'm sure that you'll agree. And I don't know where they're going with this. So even as we try to edit it, it's like, it doesn't hurt to be a little vague and leave some room to go this way or that. All right. So this excessive fixation 
on these digital platforms is counterproductive to the development of wholesome personal really interpersonal relationship it also has a let's say personal development personal on their that's personal good. development on their personal development all right so we shouldn't have first year then because we would have been touching on one issue thus far mm -hmm. is that right right so we i could... don't know if you want to try changing your edit to um different colors slightly like a blue uh, blue might be for tough, each but... point um mean? no just wherever you've made changes so we can see how it would be different unless you're going to just delete that's fine too but just oh. so we can make that distinction yeah might be too late for that <laughs> <laughs> too late. All right. Too late. We, 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 uh. huh. All right. Maybe from now on, uh, what I write will be blue. No. All right. Let's just run it. Uh, so, furthermore, right? And we have more rhetorical questions coming in. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the same paragraph that we're editing. Yeah, and that's where the confusion starts to come in. Huh? But I think um, you had decided to join the rhetorical points in the first question that you asked. And mm -hmm. now, is this worthwhile as getting cut entirely? Social media and TikTok and stuff that got in. And then time so we can't, we can't is eroded. This. Yeah, I think it could, the whole thing could cut now. So, yeah, we've reworked the first paragraph. Still mm -hmm. succinct, but still touching on the excessive use of, or, you know, kind of time wasting, distracting mm -hmm. from more important things. All right, so, secondly, I'm sure that you will agree that technology exposes youths to inappropriate content. Are we sure that they will agree? <laughs> Again, I'm not sure I would agree about that, so I wouldn't risk making that statement. I'm sure that you you'll agree. Is that too strong, Gavin, to say I, I, I'm sure you will agree? It, it may be strong, but I, I may represent it. Uh, I may have reworked it a bit. Maybe we could say, secondly, it is a fact that technology exposes youth to inappropriate content. Or we can even say it's a commonly accepted fact. Yeah, but, okay. But I'm just thinking that this is an argument. And uh, yeah. yes, logic should be uh, important. But for mm. a persuasive essay, I think the emotive appeal would mm. be more predominant in this kind of writing. Because so you have we could to leave this as is? As is or it is a fact. I think we could, we could maybe say it is... Uh, that has been proven that technology exposes uh, youth to inappropriate content. You could All be right. middle of the road and say um, something mm -hmm. like, it's difficult to argue that it doesn't, or something like that. Okay. Mm, yeah, that's another option. It would be difficult to disagree that, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Make sure you put dozens so we can keep the flow, right? Yeah, it could be difficult to, to agree that technology not expose. does not expose youths to inappropriate content, okay? Studies show, I, li I like the evidence coming in, mm -hmm. that 80% of the content that youth consume, that, that, that youth consume, digest, and regurgitate is explicit, obscene, and foul. Man, vocabulary okay. getting wicked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. Are these positive values for anyone to be exposed to? Uh, are these... Are the, is this really the type of content that our youth should be exposed to? Are these positive values? Do you like this question? Are these... 
Are these the type of are these the the, the kinds of values? I'm not sure if I like the phrasing. Are these positive values? What do you yeah, think, I guys? I, I agree too. It could be reworded. Not that the student, not, not but me. So the attempt is commendable. Uh, mm -hmm. But it could be reworded. Yeah. Uh, are these positive values um, for anyone to be exposed to? Regurgitate ideas. Uh, should should our young people be should our youths or should our young people be should our vulnerable or impressionable or some adjective there appropriate adjective should our impressionable mm -hmm. youths be exposed to these uh, content, so I, anything to that effect. Mm -hmm. So should or are these impressionable minds, what was it? Should our impressionable young or people or are vulnerable? Should our impressionable young people be exposed? I can't say really. Okay. Really be exposed to add a bit more emphasis on emotion. Should oh. um, impressionable young people really be exposed to such uh, a negative or like such destructive uh, yeah. content? Yeah, it could and be. We could re um, replace the word content in the article already to such destructive. Um, no, editing is, is harder than writing. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, I think that's also how the plan, the planning is missing. So we just jump straight in. Because this is exactly what it feels like writing when you don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. Planning is so important. Uh, let's keep content for now. And so we have replaced this. And now we have this. Technology is the hell hole of inappropriate content behaving. Okay, so have we replaced this as well? Yeah. Yeah, I think I've replaced that. Segree. Segree. Disagree with the notion of technology. Nah, disagree with that. Technology does not expose youths to inappropriate content. Studies show that 80% of the content that youth consume, digest mm -hmm. and regurgitate, is explicit, explicit, obscene, and foul. Should our impressionable young people really be exposed to such destructive content? All right, how do we move on right, from That's here? not bad. Just hearing it all together, I'm... I mean, it's kind of nit nitpicky, but like 80%, really, 80% of the content is explicit, obscene, and foul. I find that number's a little high. To extreme. Yeah. Like, outside of believability. You wrote it's down still to 60%. High, but... but. <laughs> that, or you could soften it by being like, it's foul in some way, or something like that, but like, you know. But yeah. The, the sentence structure and everything is okay, so we don't have to stick on that point. In some way, explicit, obscene, or foul. Would it be that way so it sounds a little bit more realistic? Yeah. Should our impressionable young people really be exposed to such uh, destructive content? So I mean, do, do we, yes, Gavin. No, I'm just thinking that what could be added here is maybe how these, um, this kind of exposure manifests. Uh, like the impact it has. Been exposed, yes, having been exposed to all these kind of content. 
how I, how do these manifest in the daily operation of uh, young people? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's let, let's consult the first paragraph to see. We've covered distraction. Exposes them. So it's an inappropriate content. No. So declining values. Well, the point is that it's negatively affecting the lives of young people. Yeah. It's just negatively affecting the lives of young people. So I guess what is they're the specific negative effect? Yeah, here? so they're, they're exposed to these things, right? Uh, so having been exposed to these, right, via technology, how does it impact young people? What about talking about the, the morality of the, of the youths? The morality, mm -hmm. you know, degeneration. Such mm -hmm. exposure uh, results in, for example, widespread moral decay across uh, entire populations. <laughs> Very extreme. <laughs> Or could we soften this a bit so it's, so it's, it's more fitting? Such exposure mm -hmm. results in widespread moral debasement, moral decay. Oh, what are some things that young people mm -hmm. are involved in now? So, 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 so we're, we're, we're seeing. You could literally mm -hmm. um, attach it to something that has to do with either the mind crime. or the behavior. I or be, yeah, behavior is good, like leading to illicit activities, like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I think it's too tough to actually link. It's the social media that's causing that crime. It's that phone. I'm like, while that's amazingly like a boomery thing to say, and it fits maybe the voice of the argument, I feel like that's something that you either have to back it up a lot, so you could just stop right at the point that the mindset is changing, or behaviors yeah. are changing without necessarily getting too specific. Um, let me see. What, Such exposure. What, hmm? um, okay. As evidenced in the increase in young people's involvement in criminal activities. I think we could give some examples of... Mm, um, okay. So such exposure results in widespread moral decay, as evidenced in the uh, you can say recent. It's, it's kind of a recent phenomenon, right? The social media thing, as you know, relatively as evidenced in the recent rise in young people's involvement in criminal activities. Something like that. All right. You could yeah. have mentioned some of these activities instead of mm -hmm. using some of them. For for example, then we show how at least one illicit activity ties back to instead uh, of criminal activities, could we just put the examples involvement in okay. Uh, cyber bullying, yeah, scam, scamming, and one more for good measure. Uh, so then, uh, young people's involvement in cyber bullying, scamming. Um, You don't no. want to put anything too serious, but you don't want to put anything too weak that doesn't make the point. Yeah, we can't put one serious thing, man. We're all, we're all thinking. And predatory. Still want to make it, you know, appropriate enough. Just a language. And uh, let's see. Cyberbullying, scamming. Like what else could we? Something like that. that wicked. <laughs> That's extreme. <laughs> and, even, and even murder. 
violent crimes. So, what about violent, violent crimes? crimes? Yeah, okay. And even violent crimes. Yeah. 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 All right. Like yeah, yeah. Fine. Take that. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's a uh, that one's a little bit of a stretch in my mind, but I guess there could be connections to, you know, we, social media can be used to incite, you know, um, fights and and feuds and stuff like that. Yeah. It's not. It's not too far fetched. So such exposure results in widespread moral de- decay, as evidenced in the recent rise in young people's involvement in cyberbullying, scamming, and even violent crimes. All right. I think that's a solid paragraph. Uh, so I jump down to what would be the final point. Which is negative role models. I'm trying to look at to, to find the three points here. So negative role models. Yeah. Well, for one thing, that uh, violent crime ending goes well with um, negative role models. You could just keep expanding that point. Mm-hmm. Let me see what they were going to say in the beginning. Fruity. When was the last time you've watched a video reel of some celebrities? Mm-hmm. We'll come back to the question thing again, okay? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to have to convert some of these questions to statements. I don't know which one is the strongest, or we could blend them together. Let's see. I, I like the examples put forth in this last paragraph. Mm-hmm. Solid examples of problems arising from excessive social media use. What bombards us are nudity, inappropriate language, body shaming, and violent lyrics. Oh, then are these contributing to positive values in use? Again, I might switch that how then question up into something like it's, again, like difficult to argue or tough to convince anyone or not or it is, cer- it is certainly not. I mean, we can use a strong, se- a strong statement as well. Mm-hmm. I think we've already used enough, um, not weak, but conversational approaches with the questions, so we can can start going hard on the on the points in terms of how we show that this is this is the way, this is right. So furthermore, when was the last time? Last time you watched a video or reel of some celebrities. You, you want to keep this opening question? I don't necessarily yeah. mind it. I thought I the opening it. question was all right. Yeah. What And the follow-up is, is good too, right? What bombards us are blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. Just so literally this positive values ones. This. Yeah, that's where I'd start changing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, such, we don't want to say content again. Uh, and we already said exposure. What else can we say? Uh, such. Okay. Go ahead, Gavin. Um, I'm, I'm wondering about features. I'm so I'm by this and you need it in a proper language, body shame and violent lyrics. Literally, you could just borrow the word media because one, that's what's up. And two, it kind of yeah. reminds us what we're talking about. Yeah, media is okay. Because, yeah, like method, ways of communicating, you know, the language and word. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, such media. So an example of switching this from a question to a strong statement certainly contributes negatively or, or reinforces negative values yeah, in, our system. in youth, in our youth. And the, the, the mention about society can even drop in how this impacts society, which leads to a degradation in society or something like that. Sure. Uh, 
Such media certainly certainly reinforces. Look at the contributes. Reinforces. Yeah. Reinforces. You want to say negative or stronger or like destructive or something a bit more specific than negative? Uh, or if we like it, we can leave it. Detrimental might be a nice one. Mm, but detrimental values. Or damaging, destructive, something like that. Maybe values that are detrimental. I don't know about the adjective, the detrimental values. So re certainly, right. certainly reinforce values that are detrimental. I don't know if we want to use rule of three here. Um, detrimental to the characters of our youth. Like character isn't a bad thing because what yeah. actually is being affected is their character. And detrimental to right? detrimental to our youth. Detrimental to the characters of our youth. Yeah. Leading, Leading to a degradation. Uh, we don't need R, right? Leading to, Leading to, Leading to degradation. Are leading to societal degradation. That's better. Yeah. Because also, I guess you're trying to conserve words a little bit as you go along. So, yeah. Mm. Strongest statement, too. Uh, so, we can get rid of this and we end with it is no doubt that young people today find it challenging to behave. A question inappropriately in social. That's, it should be a statement, I guess the wrong point. statement. But since we ended with this strong thing about this yeah. kind of more general thing, yeah. we couldn't go back here again. No, that's a thing that needs to be removed. All right, let's see how it will to the end if we, if we call it here. In conclusion, we can all agree that technology does indeed contribute to the decline in values among youths. It has been shown that it distracts them from managing time wisely. It also exposes them to explicit content as well as poor role models. I don't like poor. I like the idea of the word. I would change poor. Um, I want a word that captures the idea that there are bad influences, but I'm not sure if poor, oh. uh, harmful or even a simple word like that, harmful role models. Yeah. Again, it's, it's consistent with the negative slant of this, so like. Harmful role models, that's solid. Um, in conclusion, can all agree technology. Okay. Ooh, can we all agree? Cultivate, express, extern express and externalize might kind of be saying the same thing. In conclusion, we can all agree that technology does something contribute to the plan of the all right? I show them that I distract some from budget. Maybe perpetuate. To, to kind of show that it's, it's it's more cyclical. So they cultivate, they express, and then they keep they keep pushing these same values. Yeah, perpetuate is good. I support that. Hmm. All right. So let, let's look at the word count before we do a final read. This feels a bit short to me, but let's see if it's really short. It's 324 words, so it's not short. Mm -hmm. But if I, and if I exclude this, it, it would be, uh, let's see. Three hundred and two words. So that's good in mm -hmm. terms of word limit. All right. What, yeah, what I find is a bit challenging to write a compelling argument 
within the 250 to 300 word band. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. the kind of thing that makes me think that they ultimately must want less of an argument, less of a, even when they say write an essay, I don't even know if most of our minds are thinking 250 words equals essay. So at this point, I've gotten down to basically just stating why you think so in a nearly conversational tone, because you don't have enough time to build enough even supporting evidence, really and truly, to make a compelling, convincing argument. Mm -hmm. So I imagine they just want to test you for whether you kind of know the, again, the mechanics of cause and effect, use a statistic, um, evidence, rhetorical questions as we see here. So, yeah, anything like this I feel like is good, passes. I think mm -hmm. it had way too many questions in the beginning, such that if I was reading this, I might have begun to question, do you even know <laughs> the answer to any of these questions? You question just the questions. Yeah, literally that. Mm. So at this yeah, point, yeah, I think yeah. it's been brought down a bit. Um, mm. Definitely included a statistic, which helps to back this up. Like, why are you saying this? And I think the vocabulary, crippling effects, and those kinds of things, it stayed consistent with the, yes, I think this is a negative impact. Yeah, there are some good, some good vocabulary words here that would kind of show that the, the writer is at a an advanced level. Mm -hmm. Every paragraph has a couple of nice words. You have vulnerable. That's mm -hmm. that's 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 nice. Uh, even how, how rewarding is used there is, is 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 nice. As opposed to you know the best use of time, most rewarding. Mm -hmm. Excessive fixation. Counterproductive. So these are nice words to throw in an essay like this interpersonal crippling effect. Nice phrase. Yeah. So yeah, in terms of vocabulary, I think this is nice. Impressionable. Moral decay. Nice phrasing as evidenced in. That's a nice way to introduce um examples that's that, that are going to support your claim real is i'm not sure if some of the c-set markers would know what a real is but it's a very current word that you know we know it, it makes sense when it comes to like instagram and so on some markers might be confused i wonder what a real is <laughs> to be honest somehow i'm so old-fashioned that um i saw a wheel of film but still yeah. i think the yeah right yeah. same <laughs> So yeah. I feel like the I idea might be in there, though. Mm -hmm. A video, or uh, to be honest, I said I might say clip, a short clip, or something as that means real. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if I would say real, but I guess it, it's 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 fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we'll, we'll see many examples, which is good. For each point, you have a couple of examples of what the thing is: nudity, inappropriate language, body shaming, violent lyrics. detrimental degradation so yeah i think the points are expressed the vocabulary is csec level and we have a few devices we have rhetorical question we have statistics we have use of examples mm. yeah all right so um could we so we are we're seeing the points here um connected though do you think that one is needed um, to introduce the first point, first point there, uh, because I think one of the issues is cohesion or cohesiveness mm. of the, the ideas. So you just don't want the points or the arguments to be abrupt. Uh, the, there yeah. must be some fluidity in the, in the presentation. So between paragraphs and within the paragraphs, so I'm wondering if the first paragraph needs still begin with an appropriate connective. I'm just wondering here. I know we're here? Yeah. Oh. But I guess since it's a rhetorical question, I don't know, I might oh, take it up okay. okay. All right. Yeah, um, and it, to introduce yeah. the supporting ideas, so especially with the studies here, the second paragraph, um, so it would be 
well to disagree that technology does not expose you to inappropriate content. Um, in fact, studies show uh, sometimes I, I I know that this could work, right? So studies, mm. show, but yeah, in fact, it's nice. In fact, it's yeah, nice to introduce, uh -huh. yeah, to introduce it. And and I'm wondering too if it'd be better for the student to identify the institution or person who who would have actually done this form of investigation and reported uh this finding so so for example studies done by our studies carried out by i don't know anything the, the university the, of, of the west indies by the uwi yeah, some expert some expert um individual some expert by mm -hmm. Experts yeah. from my no, you, you don't have. I, I could, we could just say maybe the acclaimed University of the West Indies or wherever, uh, but something yeah. to point to anything that, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it adds a bit more weight to, yeah. to the evidence, so yeah, in fact, so, so this, yeah, carried out by. Carried out by expert from University of the West Indies, show that. So we'll just take out this, take out this show that. In fact, this, yeah, studies show. What about indicate? As a slightly yeah. higher level word. Yeah. yeah. Indicate that. Or confirm. Or if you want to say uh, reveal or something. something. Okay, reveal. I like confirm. Because yeah, we, we, we basically have made that stance and we yeah, so confirmed it. So yeah, that's yeah. good too. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Reveal is nice too when, when looking at evidence. Yeah. yeah. So so we're, we're like, seeing con, con, continue. Mm, yeah, I'm just saying I, I like the in fact, I think it ties ties this paragraph together here. Uh so we have in fact. The secondly, kind of indicates, uh, it kind of transitions nicely. Yes. Secondly, in fact, uh, and then we have another question and uh, like a response to the question. So I think the paragraph is good in terms of connectives. Yeah. Yeah. Furthermore, Introducing another point. Uh, such media, not exactly a connecting term, but you're you're relating yeah, to what you just mentioned. Yeah. Are these could mm -hmm. we use we had used such um in the previous paragraph? Okay. These media in conclusion Are to wrap it up. So, so it's uh, reinforcing, so the reinforces. The media. Yeah, this media reinforce. Yeah. Uh, but good. I would say. Yeah, it's well, I think it's, it's it improves. It improved yeah. a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we just up the, vo the vocabulary, diversify the device from just rhetorical question, and add some connectives. Yeah. Took us a while to get there because we, we don't have a plan looking at <laughs> We're basically reverse engineering the essay plan. Yeah. yeah. A bit of time. All right. Use well, I think it's a good job. I think the flow is nice. It's yeah. it's definitely in somebody else's voice. Like again, I tend to prefer a simpler style that is not lost on anybody. Mm. But this definitely feels like a strong argument and it's consistent, which if this is how you write, then yeah. But I just think the biggest issue with this, like maybe most of the points and everything was it was all right before, but the question level just needs to come down a bit. Really and truly. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's 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 keep jumping because this is a stream. People in the chat, if you're tired, you have to go sleep because we're working it. We're working it. This is the last life. So if you're tired, don't ask us to stop. If you can't manage, grab a coffee or drop out of the race. Up to you. All right, let me let me jump back to let me do a new share. New share. Um, you going to try the other one? Um, I'm gonna touch one of mine. 
and then we touch one up, one more up pandas and then we, we cycle back to the pdf the pdf okay, if we don't get around to mine i would have just been exploring the same um uh speech that i have already done a video on my channel so even though my commentary might have been different the content would be the same so if you must see it then yeah it's over there but yeah, you know man. let's let's, let's definitely get to it, man. see what your sample is looking like We'll get around to it, Panda, because even if it's the same speech, I might have additional insights now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. So we want to work as many samples as we can. Uh, it, it's a marathon, you know, guys. It's a marathon. It's just one of those nights. When, when I touch university, this is going to be a regular affair. You know, studying until morning light. Or play dominoes until morning light. That's what I did, actually, but worked out somehow oh. uh, where am i on may 2018 again this seems to be my favorite paper and i'm not sure why it's, it's just by chance it seem to be working a lot of questions from this particular paper remember this summary guys that was a nice summary uh, uh, section oh that was a nice story uh, mm -hmm. Okay, section D. Uh, this one is a bit similar to the one you you touched on, Panda. That's why I wanted to look at it. Uh, the foreign oh. language one. This one is quite similar. Oh yes, oh, community service. I disagree. Mm -hmm. I wonder disagree? which side you chose. Ah, oh. you're gonna find out. <laughs> yeah, every secondary school student should be required to do community service as a condition for graduation. Yeah, so as usual, sure. as usual, I start with this little box here. Um, I never skip this step, no matter how many times I work a question. Plan, 10 minutes, okay. Brainstorm, both sides. This is the plan. Choose side. That's my step two. Select three points. That's my step three. After plan, it's right. And the writing takes me 25 minutes. You guys should know my process by now. And I'm going to write intro. Point one. Point two. Point three. And after writing, it's going to just be a review if I have time. Maybe that will take five minutes if I have time. All right. So for the brainstorming both sides, we're going to have four and against. And I can let me know in the chat what points you can come up with for and against this prompt here. And Panda and Gavin, let me know. What you think could jump out at you if you got this today in the exam? For me, I have built soft skills, right? In support of community service, build soft skills. Students get a chance to give back to the community. Yeah, good for job opportunities, and yeah, I don't have to mention that, but it would be good for like university, yeah. yeah, yeah, let me add it and university applications, yeah, uh can build relationships, different kind of connections you can form while doing this kind of thing. And this point is kind of vague, but connect with uh, and understand their environment. You know, you're engaging with the community, you have a chance to interact with, with the environment, the community. 
So these are points that I could find for and against more work for teachers and students. Right? If you're going to be introducing one more thing to do, teachers are going to somehow have more marking or whatever to do, or grading or supervision, and students are going to have more work, which, me, which would naturally lead to less time for studies. This is a point that can be used for a lot of essays that deal with should students, blah, blah, blah. One of the against points that will almost always work is you're going to have less time to study if you take up this new thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 100%. Yeah. If community service is forced, because we're talking about it being mandatory, resistance. Is it really right. servants? It will be less meaningful. Same thing. Mm. Same thing that you guys are saying. You're going to resist it because, well, you're forcing me to do it. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And next point I have is kind of forceful. School is about learning or students learning, not building the labor force. And how, how I would explain this is, we shouldn't be using students as, as free labor in, in schools, right? Let them learn. If you want people to come and clean up the environment, hire people, leave the students out of it. So these are some thoughts that I could jot down for and against. I chose to go for, to Panda's disapproval. I agree with you. I, I think this stage is critical um, because even though sometimes we may have a personal um, preference, sometimes it's a bit challenging for us to articulate it, especially um, when there's a time constraint. Um, yeah. So it's best, even if we do not personally agree with a particular position, if we find that it is better for us to argue um, for a particular side, based on the points that we would have uh, represented in the planning section. Um, mm -hmm. That would be a better approach than to simply work on a, with a position because it's my personal view and then it's difficult for me to compellingly um, represent mm -hmm. my position. At the end of the yeah. day, I try to secure maximum marks. And that, that is exactly my position here because personally, I wouldn't want to force anybody to do community service. But I just think it's so easy to, to say good things, positive things, you know, in favor of community service. Exactly. It's just one of those things where even if you're personally against it, it might be easier to just find three points to agree. I call it a day. Yeah. I think so too. All right. So I would have done that, that, and that. Of course, this would take me a bit more time in the exam, but this is all pre-thought out, so I can mm -hmm. speed through the whole thing. For those watching and wondering, oh, who oh, Mr. Webb did that so fast? No, no, no. In the exam, I would have to take my time, think about the points. Right? Yeah, We're I, not I, I, taking that time now. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, so for the intro, the last time... I did a different style intro. I, I did an intro that gave a hook and my stance, and that was it. This time, my intro, my intro is going to be a bit more fulsome. So I'm going to do a hook for this intro. Then I'm going to state my stance, and then I'm going to mention the three points that the essay will discuss. So it's a five-paragraph essay. Intro, point, 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 conclusion. All right, so I start with this. School should foster. Put this mic here so you guys can hear me. School should foster the holistic development of students. All right, so this hook 
is nothing fancy, no rhetorical question or statistic. It's just a profound statement, quote unquote. School should foster the holistic development of students. And I'll explain a little bit. Such that they will be, uh, I'll improve as I go along. They will be equipped to thrive in and contribute to today's world. All right, what do you think? What, what do you feel about the opening sentence? School should foster the holistic development of student, students such that they will be equipped to thrive in and contribute to today's world. Yep, that sounds factual yeah. and brown nosing and correct for what we decided to do. I'm yeah. with it. And I think it's it's gently indicating the side I'm on. Where you're going, yeah. I state it explicitly. Right. Therefore, it is only logical to propose mm -hmm. that, and now we restate the question in a stance form, every secondary school student should be required to engage in community service. Oh, in order to graduate. In order, that's how the question stated, to graduate. Yeah, I think that's a beautiful start. Blends yeah, together really start. well and makes sense. Yeah. So for the last essay, I stopped here basically and moved on. But now I'm going to mention the three points. It's just showing another style of intro. Of course, this gives you a bigger intro, which means you have to do more word conservation throughout the essay. So it's up to you. Mm -hmm. This, so I'm going to mention the three points, but in a creative way. This would yield a slew of important benefits. important uh, benefits to students. And now I'm going to name the three I'm going to discuss. Uh, three of which will be, uh, let's say, um, explored. Yeah, that's good. In this essay. Yeah. This looks funny, but I couldn't find a better way to punctuate it. Namely, I'm not going to name them. First one is the development of various critical skills. That's the first advantage. Next one. Opportunities for career, and academic prospects, and a means to give back to the community. So this is what I call a, a, a thick intro, right? It's on the Definitely thicker end. Thick, yeah. The thicker end. Yeah. But I think it, it covers the bases, and so it might be easier to expound going forward. I give a hook, I state my stance, and I mention the three points going forward. If I need to reduce words, it's possible to do so from here. All right. So the first intro. I like to begin with as opposed to firstly, just a personal preference. To begin with, okay. 
community service offers, I'm going to say, an avenue through which high school students Just so I'm not saying secondary school students throughout the entire essay. Uh, to begin with, community service offers an avenue through which high school students can develop. And at first I had here a variety, but I think I'm going to say an array. I haven't used that word in a little while. An array of critical skills. And I could say soft skills if I wanted to, because I have critical skills up here. Not a perfect synonym, but for this case, uh, they're similar enough. An array of soft skills that are not prioritized. Oh my goodness. Hold on again, hold on again. All this madness happening. All right, that are not prioritized by their regular curricula. All right, so to begin with, Community service offers an avenue through which high school students can develop an array of soft skills that are not prioritized by their curricula. All right. I'm going to expound a little bit. The current school system focuses on academic studies. In order to prepare students for major exams and higher levels of study. While this is important, so I'm acknowledging that side, a little bit of a counterpoint, you might say. Students also need to develop other skills. And I'm going list, to list some examples, such as Collaboration, leadership, time management, and adaptability. A final sentence here. Community service would provide students, uh, let's say, the time and space to develop these critical skills. All right, it's my first para. To begin with, community service offers an avenue through which high school students can develop an array of soft skills that are not prioritized by their regular curriculum. The current school system focuses on academic studies in order to prepare students for major exams and high levels of study. And what I could do if I wanted to cut words, I could cut this and just say academic studies. While this, while this is important, students also need to develop other skills, such as collaboration, 
leadership, time management, and adaptability. Community service would provide students the time and space to develop these critical skills. All right, so I'm done with the critical skills point. My next point would be uh, give back to the community, All right? Give back to the community. And I'm going to link it by, I like to, I like when one paragraph bleeds into the next. So I'm going to say, as students develop the aforementioned skills, the aforementioned skills, so everything is connected smoothly. As students develop the aforementioned skills, through community service. And I know the handwriting is all is only getting worse. They will also gain invaluable work experience. In this way, more connection. Oh, man. Yeah. In this way, as they serve the community, they are able to get a taste of the working world and bolster their resumes. These experiences Someone says, sir, shouldn't you develop the paragraphs in order like, you, like your thesis statement? Am I not? Uh, development of critical skills. Opportunities for career and academic prospects. So I, I'm do, I'm, I, I dealt with this one first, right? Critical um, skills. Yeah. And I, I think... No, I'm dealing with this. Right? No, to give back to the community. Okay, yeah, it As is. students develop. It is. Yeah, yeah, I think so. As students develop the aforementioned skills, so touching on the skills again through community service, they will also gain invaluable work experience. Yeah, work experience, work on academic stuff now. In this way, as they serve the community, they are able to get a taste of the working world and bolster their resumes. Yeah, I think it's another. Uh, these experiences will, I like the word undoubtedly, if I can spell it, undoubtedly. These experiences will undoubtedly make them more attractive candidates for employers as well as university admissions teams. You know? In fact, and I'm introducing my statistic with the in fact, Reports from top Caribbean universities indicate that applicants who have community service experience are 65% 
more likely to be admitted. This paragraph makes sense. As students develop the aforementioned skills through community service, they will also gain invaluable work experience. In this way, as they serve the community, they are able to get a taste of the working world and bolster their resumes. These experiences will undoubtedly make them more attractive candidates for employers, as well as university admissions teams. In fact, reports from top Caribbean universities indicate that applicants who have community service experience are 65% more likely to be admitted. Yeah. So now I'm gonna to touch on the last point. The last point. So I'm done with point two. Now I'm gonna to touch on Wait a minute. I see what the person was saying in the comments now. I touched on this one second. So no I need to touch on give back to the community, right? Yeah. So I touched on point one, development of critical skills, touched on opportunities for career and academic, blah, blah, blah. And now I need to touch on the last one, which is give back to the community, okay. So I just had it twisted in the planning, but not, but it was good in the essay. So good old fashioned, finally, old fashioned guy. Finally, high school students should be given not just the chance, but also the responsibility, because we're talking about making something mandatory, the responsibility to give back to their communities, and start making a positive impact on the world, even before completing secondary school. And I'm going to add a little bit more evidence-ish kind of thing now. Major media outlets like the Jamaica Gleaner and the New York Times have reported countless instances of high school students strengthening their communities through endeavors like tutoring programs, community gardening projects, and clothing drives. All right, so time to wrap up this final point. Such experiences that benefit both the students and the community ought to be hey <laughs> ought to be a fixture 
in the modern secondary education system. And conclusion, as high school prepares students for work and life, community service should be as compulsory as mathematics, let's say, or, and as mathematics and English. That's definitely a strong statement, though. It's very strong. <laughs> the personal and professional just recapping all of the the benefits the personal and professional development fostered that was one the career and educational or i could say academic prospects gained And the opportunity, this is my final sentence, to make a positive impact on one's environment are only three of the numerous factors that support this position. A, a little bit long, it's a little bit long. It's about 350 words maybe. Yeah. About now that I'm getting closer to what it looks like, it might be a little long, but I thought the points were well-developed and I mean, it's still approximately so. Yeah, it's approximately so I'm not, mm. As long as I'm not going under, I am not super, super, super worried about going a bit over um, the range because they say approximately 250 to 300. So I think I would prefer to go a bit over than to underdevelop a point and lose points for that. If I had to make that choice in the exam, I'd rather go over a bit and develop my essay fully than force myself within the limit and leave off a piece of my essay. Agreed. So this is just where it ended up. So I'm just going to read it through and then you let me know what I think about the general flow and thing. Right? So school should foster the holistic development of students such that they will be equipped to thrive in and contribute to today's world. Therefore, you can stop me at any point. Uh, yeah. Therefore, it is only logical to propose that every secondary school student should be required to engage in community service in order to graduate. This would yield a slew of important benefits to students, three of which will be explored in this essay. Namely, the development of various critical skills, opportunities for career and academic prospects, and a means to give back to the community. To begin with, Community service offers an avenue through which high school students can develop an array of soft skills that are not prioritized by their regular curricula. The mm -hmm. current school system focuses on academic studies in order to prepare students for major exams and higher levels of study. While this is important, students also need to develop other skills, such as collaboration, leadership, time management, and adaptability. Community service would provide students the time and space to develop these critical skills. As students develop the aforementioned skills through community service, they will also gain invaluable work experience. In this way, as they serve the community, they are able to get a taste of the working world and better and bolster their resumes. These experiences will undoubtedly make them more attractive candidates for employers 
as well as university admissions teams. In fact, reports from top Caribbean universities indicate that applicants who have community service experience are 65% more likely to be admitted. Finally, high school students should be given not just the chance, but also the responsibility to give back to their communities and start making a positive impact on the world, even before, they, even before completing secondary school. Major media outlets like the Jamaica Gleaner and the New York Times have reported countless instances of high school students strengthening their communities through endeavors like tutoring programs, community gardening projects, and clothing drives. Such experiences that benefit both the student and the community ought to be a fixture in the modern secondary education system. As high school prepares students for work and life, community service should be as compulsory as mathematics and English. The personal and professional development fostered, career and educational prospects gained, and the opportunity to make a positive impact on one's environment are only three of the numerous factors that support this position. Yeah, what do you think? I thought that was really good. Um, I'd give it five out of five, actually. Oh, um, wow. The, the elusive five out of five from Panda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, but I thought the flow was actually really good. I didn't have any questions as to which side of the argument you supported. In fact, it didn't even really feel like an argument. It just felt persuasive. As, again, somebody who doesn't necessarily think that it should be mandatory to do community service because of all the other points you raised above, I think it um, even had a chance of bringing me over to the other side. Like, it sounds like a good idea. So I think that's a good sign of when it's well done. All right. What do you think, Gavin? It ends up being two and a half, two and a quarter, two and a third page, so not that bad. I, I agree with Panda. And especially once you're able to execute this kind of writing under exam condition and within the time band or the time constraint, mm -hmm. um, I think that this is a really good job. So the arguments are clear and your position is evident. So it's not a situation where we have to be trying to make inferences, right? So mm -hmm. your, your, your arguments are pointed. And I think the development of the arguments too uh, is impressive. Um, so we see clear evidence of how the how community service could actually benefit students. All right. Um, the, the, I see a number of persuasive techniques used throughout uh, the, the essay here too which I, I think is commendable. But especially what um, really stood out to me is the flow of the argumentation. So it's quite cohesive. Mm. Um, and, and there's a clear sense of audience too um, in, in this writing. So mm -hmm. I think this is a solid essay. I think All right. Good. Nice. So the, uh, the cohesion was what I... And I wrote this in one of the... The, the master classes that I did, I, I wrote it while the students were working the question. So I did it within the time. So just so those in the chat are, don't think that they can't do this within the time. The, the point is, if you plan, you're able to do it. But yeah. going in without a plan would be similar to how the three of us were kind of struggling to you know edit that, that previous essay. And it's not that the essay was bad. It was that mm -hmm. we weren't the ones who planned it, right? So if you plan going in, then it, it might be easier to just focus on vocabulary and expression as opposed to thinking while you're writing. And so I try to approach it. Exactly. Um, one, one I, I'm, not, I'm not certain if this is personal, but mm. I'm wondering if it's, would be beneficial for the student to to vary the persuasive techniques that are work in each paragraph if that is something that you would actually support that they vary the techniques or vary the text structures that are used so as not to have one um set of techniques or structure um replete uh throughout the the essay i'm just wondering yeah. about that 
I, I would suggest as much as possible, try not to overdo a, a, a particular device. Yeah. So, and if you're, if you're going to be not overdoing a device, it means you're going to be needing some amount of variety. Yeah. Yeah. So cause and effect is a, is an easy one to integrate. Yeah. If this happens, this will happen. Yeah. So you've used that and I'm see, I've seen contrast in, in one of the paragraphs there. So you, you somewhat alluded to, well, not fully, what the opponents would actually suggest. But then you inserted how it is that community service would even enhance that particular, um, the, the, that particular, the particular focus of school or education generally. Yes, it's for academic uh, purposes, but academics can be complemented with community service. And we see then how students' involvement in community service would actually serve to benefit them. Right, so Adam has disappeared yet again. Oh, um, yep. Yeah. He's dropped out. Yeah, so, so, so I think a suggestion to, um, to students is that in the planning process, you could actually jot down the text structures and techniques, persuasive techniques that you will use to develop each point. So that could be done in the planning stages so that when you're writing, it's much easier to develop the arguments. That's true. That's something that you could do in less than a minute or so. Um, I think that it's kind of strange as adam was saying to overdo just one technique to make it just all questions there you are welcome back yeah uh, understood so so for a student who, is, who, is, who would struggle with developing ideas um awareness of the text structures and array of techniques persuasive techniques that is that can be employed would prove mm -hmm. beneficial to the students so uh, Adam pointed out that cause and effect is an easy one. So if I have one, part, if I have a point in support of my position, and I'm not too certain of how to really develop that particular point, I think of a text structure. So cause and effect. So I provide evidence or examples of how this particular benefit would manifest, and then say what the effects would be on a mm -hmm. secondary school student. And whilst doing that, I could insert uh, loaded words, so emotive language, uh, the rhetorical question, statistical data, and so forth. So that, that's an approach for a struggling student. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, bol bolstering the evidence, when you do use evidence, I would say you might not need to use evidence more than twice in the essay, because it's not a super long essay. But when you do use the evidence, if you can suggest where it is coming from, I, I wasn't very specific when I said top Caribbean universities, just something to indicate where the data is coming from yeah. might, might, might make the evidence seem a bit more credible. Or yeah. you can actually name a particular source if, if you want to be specific. Yeah. So yes, yeah, st statistics is easy. Cause and effect is easy. Rhetorical question is super easy. So three devices I can work in very easily, even at a beginner level. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. And the cause and effect, it, it works not just as a device, but also to improve the coherence and flow of the argument. Because if one thing is leading to another thing, and that thing is resulting in that, then your argument can flow seamlessly. There should hardly be I think there shouldn't be a very, very rigid break between points from one point to the next. Yeah. So one point should kind of ease into the next one. It, it's such a smooth, natural flow that, you know, it, it's just like a conversation. It's not like, it's not as mm -hmm. if we're going to be speaking and say, okay, let's talk about the weather. Okay, let's talk about feelings. How are you today? You know, one, one, one line of argument just fades into the next naturally. So mm -hmm. if your essay can do that, and one literature can do it in a deliberate way, 
you can either introduce the upcoming point at the ending of your paragraph or reiterate the previous point at the beginning of the next paragraph. So that way the paragraphs kind of mesh and it's easier to build the coherence. Yeah. yeah. I think one of my favorite ways to build coherence like that is to just use like one word. I mean, sometimes it's adjoining words like similarly, nevertheless, therefore, those kinds of things. But um, it can be done in even a brief way without noticing just joining the points together like that. But just mm -hmm. one word, but like, as long as it doesn't feel like point one, two, three with no yeah. right connection, that's what's up. Mm. Yeah. All right. So Panda, your speech, and then we, we touch on the, the PDF we have from Gavin. Right, 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 right. right. And okay, maybe so... that, will, that will be the, <laughs> that will be the touchdown maybe. Right, I am sharing speech writing question. Um, so let's see if we can get that on screen. I don't know if you're seeing it. Okay, now we're seeing it. Right, live, cool. So this is the um, question that was shown in the syllabus. So I don't think it was ever used on any paper so far and it might have some slight differences from exactly how yours would appear. But this was interesting because as you can see here, outside of the ordinary instructions that we are familiar with, there's this idea of pretending that you are a character, right? So in this case, you're the member of a school board that's considering reforms. And that has a lot to do with um, the kind of voice that you're going to end up using as you create this piece, because, you know, that's important as well. So they say one of the suggestions is that all schools should make provisions for students who have disabilities of any kind. So this is what we are accustomed to seeing. This is the statement that you're either going to be for or against, right? So they ask you now to write the speech that you would make to the board, giving your views on the statement. So I know people tend to get pretty um, concerned about the format of stuff, um, letters, emails, this, that, the other, but I didn't find that I knew any format for a speech. And so the most important thing for me became the content, right? So we're taking a look at this here. First thing I did was rewrite the actual um, prompt so I could just stay on focus, write a speech about school reform that's going to persuade people to install facilities for disabled students. So I'm like, all right, that doesn't seem too complicated when you look at it like that. So here you see I had this good, bad, y chart, which is the same thing as I said before as for and against, or seeing what um, you support or don't support. Same thing, you put out your ideas like this. Valid thoughts that I had um, were that many children might be affected by this disabled students thing, um, because you need to remember that you're trying to convince people that's another thing that I should say, using your imagination a little bit, you are the member of this board, right? So these are people who are getting ready to think about spending money, they're getting ready to think about doing construction on the school. This is what we're trying to convince them. This is an important thing that we actually need to spend the budget on, so to speak. So right away, even as I was imagining that, I could tell that on the bad side here, expensive and difficult were just easy things for me to see, right? But then on the good side, I jump back to being like, I mean, after all, you're a school, you're responsible for these children's education. So that's something that the school board should be taking seriously. And then I decided to appeal to emotion by saying that you wouldn't want these children who are disabled to feel that they're a burden or that in some way um, they are the problem as to why they can't get the same quality of education as their peers would, right? So I thought that was a good emotion to put in there. And, you know, you have to choose whether you're for or against, but like, I don't think anybody wants to see that, oh yes, we're making decisions for disabled students and we are deciding that we're not going to cater to their needs because that's the kind of people we are. So there's practically only one thing to do here, I felt <laughs> like, 
right? So I chose to include a statistic because I knew that some amount of Y would have to be in here. So I said, okay, 10%, I just made that statistic up that there's a noticeable chunk of the student population that um, would be affected by this or is being affected right now and would benefit from the improvements. And then I said duty because after all, this is the school board, so literally this is your job. I knew I was gonna need some details about what exactly I'm suggesting they do once I make this convincing. So I said, well, how many ways could you be disabled or what could these children need or what could the school need? So I said, if they're wheelchair using, ramps, doors, or other conveniences like that, might be good. Training the teachers, if it's something that's more of like ADHD or some other technically a learning disability. And then maybe if it's just something simple, like a visual learner, AV equipment. Really, I was thinking about this more from the standpoint of what could I be trying to convince these people to buy or refurbish is probably the ideal, um, or else to change a policy. So I came up with this ramps and doors type of thing, equipment and training. So I didn't have all the time in the world to plan that, so this is what I began writing. Now you'll see, now my handwriting is normally atrocious, but this was done when I wrote this question, all in a flow. So I had been writing for nearly two hours at this point, so that's the result we're seeing here. But I can decipher this, I hope, and let me just read it to you. See, I started with ladies and gentlemen because it's a speech, and I just instantly wanted to communicate that this is a speech. So. I said, ladies and gentlemen, it is with a heavy sense of responsibility to the students of our institution that I now request your attention. When I was first asked if there was any aspect of our student and teacher experience that I believed required change, there should have been a comma there, one issue stood out most. That issue, my colleagues, was the lack of appropriate facilities for our students with disabilities. As you may know, our student body is approximately 500 students. Roughly 10% of these children have some form of disability, be it physical, mental, or emotional. This means that daily, 50 children under our stewardship struggle to cope in an environment not suited to their particular needs. This, to me, is unacceptable. We have the power to change this. With a view to making school life easier for the wheelchair-using students, I propose the installation of access ramps and automatic doors. For those with learning disabilities, I would suggest either special training be given to our existing teachers or that new teachers with knowledge in this area be hired. Whatever course of action is taken, our students with disabilities should never be made to feel that they are a burden or are unteachable. I am, on that note, conscious that these recommended changes are not necessarily easy upgrades to make, especially considering our budget. However, as board members, it is our duty and responsibility to give every child who attends our school the best learning experience possible. From that standpoint, cost should be of lesser importance when compared with students' development. I ask you to give this your earnest consideration I believe it to be one of the most valid improvements possible on our reform drive. Thank you. All right, so that was 288 words. Mm. So for once, just inside that um, word limit, and it took me about 35 minutes to do, which was less than the time that they recommended, but it was good because I had used up that time between the summary and the story, I think, ran a little bit over. Right, so that was a speech. I feel like it sounded speechy because it started with ladies and gentlemen and ended with thank you, right? That was the best I was willing to give at that particular time. Um, Hale, as I explained, everything I was thinking in the planning section, this sense of responsibility, I wanted to get that in very soon. Um, and I brought in the prompt Hale in terms of, is there anything about our student and teacher experience that we could change? Remember up here, they are considering school reform. So that's what we're literally doing. Right, and so after that, I just basically blended into the points. You see, it's not as stark and obvious exactly what the um, issues were. 
but you can see that I'm definitely not against installing these facilities for these disabled students. And then I've included this statistic just smoothly. It's 500 children and 10% of them have something that could be supported better. So here they're under our stewardship and they're struggling to cope. See how I'm making that sound like a bad thing that they don't have um, these facilities. And this to me is unacceptable. It's kind of a play on emotion because it's almost mm -hmm. like these people that you're giving the speech to, is it acceptable to you that 50 children are struggling every day at our institution? So I'm just kind of putting that in there. And we have the power to change this. I think it's all pretty self-explanatory, right? So that is how I came up with this particular speech. This question, as I said, was a little bit different than just write an essay giving you views. I don't know if they ever really come like this in real life or if this was just the syllabus example, but this is what I would do in a situation that came different and you suddenly have a persona that you need to adopt and you need to kind of figure out a format for what you're doing as well in terms of a speech. So essentially I used the same style of planning and this was my execution, All right? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it, I like it. Right. So I always think that as long as the point goes across and you can tell which side of the argument um, is being supported, and I had a whole extra page here, and you hit the word limit and you have some amount of vocabulary, you know, earnest consideration, just not ordinary everyday words. You know, I never like to go in especially hard on vocabulary, especially because sometimes your mind is just like kind of burnt out at this stage and you're there. So just enough to keep it beyond primary school level, but not going anywhere that you can't deal. So stewardship is kind of in that zone call these people your colleagues, which is both keeping you in character and using a word. So everywhere I go through my writing, I'm trying to sprinkle in a little bit of all of the things we need, and I think comes together. So if someone was really going to critique this, especially as I say, using the answer keys or whatever, I don't know that they could say some piece of this was just missing, something about it was wrong necessarily. It may be more or less the examiner's taste. Maybe they thought it could have been a little more um, fancy sounding. Maybe they would have pictured it being longer. But when you really look at this, it qualifies in all the areas. And I think that that's one of the most important things. Just don't um, mess up on some area that was literally in the instructions. You just want to get there and get past it on actual exam day. Again, practice absolutely everything that you can in terms of different uh, variations of questions get the vocabulary flowing, understand what you're trying to do. But on the actual day and in terms of what you actually write, I would say keep it within where your grasp is, know your weak points, and then just kind of do something that qualifies. So that would be my advice when it comes to um, this type of thing on section D. That's what I would say to a real person going into the exam. Because I mean, we don't all always have the best vocabulary all the time. We don't always have the best ideas. Sometimes the prompt just isn't doing it for us as people. You also might have anything going on that day. Just nervous, just tired, just the summary through you for a different amount of time than you're expecting. So have that plan and um, use the planning area that you get. Make something like this that at least considers the good ideas, the bad ideas, and why, some amount of supporting issues. As um, Gavin was saying earlier, listing your ways to persuade, I literally didn't need anything more than statistics and emotions here. But if you were kind of struggling, you could also have had cause and effect because I could easily have said, the fact that we don't have these facilities is causing something and like lean into it heavier in terms of that. It's implied when I continue the statistic into roughly 10% of these children, like that's literally a statistic. But here I continue with, this means that daily, so cause and effect is coming in here. 
50 children under our stewardship struggle to cope. Under our stewardship and struggle to cope is also me blending in some emotion though. So you see, it's just all of them coming together to be persuasive um, when you look at it from a broad view, right? Then I felt like this last paragraph in this statement, we have the power to change this. Someone who felt somewhat convinced by what I said before might be thinking to themselves, well, what do you want me to do about this in a way? And as they begin to think that, they might say, well, what do you want me to do? Because these things up here, it's expensive. What do you want me to do? It's difficult. I hear what you say about these children being affected and so on. And I know we're responsible for their education, but these other issues are real as well. So after I suggest what I think they should do, I come to this paragraph here where I'm literally talking to those people who are skeptical. And I'm like, I know that what I'm suggesting here is not necessarily easy. And I know that it's expensive, but I didn't say expensive. I just said considering our budget. However, there should be a comma here. If you ever just use a linking word, just put a comma after it. It's better to have that comma there and not need it than need it and not have it type of thing. So I just dropped that out because I was tired, but try not to do that. So anyway, however, as board members, it's our duty and responsibility to give every child who needs our attention the best learning experience possible. And so costs should be of lesser importance. So that's how I'm joining those ideas together. And that's what's up. Okay. So yeah, I don't think I have any more ways that I can take this apart. Um, that is literally why I did what I did. Let me see if I've got any comments that I missed because I have not been looking at the chat. Um, yeah, do you remember seeing this on the channel? Yes, it was there as well. I'd probably mm -hmm. done a similar-ish explanation to this, but I think today we're seeing how it fits into how these questions often come. These days, it's a lot of write an essay giving your views, but if for some reason it suddenly wasn't an essay and it just startled you because it's different, you've seen at least one example that's different that you could handle it using the same skill set and the same process, but you'd just be writing something slightly different, right? Because I, I know this format thing is confusing and sometimes it even baffles me why it bothers students so much especially on section B, which I know we're not talking about today, but okay. On section B, it's expository writing. So it's literally the same fact finding and facts rearranging that you're doing. And then you just restructure it into whatever the requested format is. So it shouldn't, in my opinion, really scare you so much if it's an email versus a letter versus a report of some kind, because most of what you're doing will still be the same thing. So you'll still be like at least 85% prepared for what they want you to do because it's the same type of question. So yeah, if I got judged for the clarity, organization and development of this argument, I think it was okay. You can see this was a syllabus paper because they're just missing B entirely, but there you go. I thought you could believe that this was a speech made by someone on the school board. It fit inside the word limit. I had no problems. So Adam, do speeches come in the exams as well? You only taught argumentative essay. Right, see, this yeah, is what I'm... It, hmm? it is, but I'm saying a speech is a persuasive essay anyway. Some type really of that? persuasive essay. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, there's no difference. There's no real difference between a speech and any other persuasive essay, except yeah. for the, you know, you're taking up a, a particular persona, so the context is a bit more specific, but... The writing format, writing style is going to be identical otherwise. Agreed. And um, there needs to be audience appeal. And I think she did that. So apart very from well, you, well. I'm a mm -hmm. persona. There has to be an audience that you're targeting. And she, mm -hmm. she did that and she made appeals to the audience uh, from the start. So I think that's a, a distinction that needs to be uh, displayed. To, um, as proof that the students know the distinction between or the difference between the speech and a persuasive essay. So yeah. they yeah. are different. And I'm seeing where she actually worked them. So call to yeah. action, um, 
continuous reference to the audience. So she had ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm aware that you or you should be aware, ask you to give this. So I, I see where she ensures that she punctuates the fact that I know the distinction between a speech and a persuasive essay. Yeah. yeah. And maybe, maybe on, on, yes, yes, Panda, go, go. Yeah, on, on my channel, on this video, I think someone had um, been confused because they're like, the teacher told them not to put I, like, right. Not to, ref yeah, to refer to themselves in a persuasive essay. And I mean, literally, I did this because this is requiring you to say that you are the person making a speech. So it's fine to say I, I would have to think. But um, if it was just a regular essay, you might want to lean away from. I just because there are a bunch of other ways you could express yourself. We did every piece of writing that happened today was taken from a third person standpoint that didn't have to do with necessarily saying I believe whatever while you're still giving your views. So that's a thing, but just adjusting the voice in an, a circumstance like this where you've literally been told to adopt a persona, I feel like that's fine. So that's just a notation there because it can be confusing at this point. We've all heard a bunch of different things from a bunch of different places, but you know, being appropriate to the question, I feel like is the most important thing ultimately. So yeah, just want to point that out. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And I, I think what Adam is saying, and for those students who possibly wouldn't have been uh, doing much work relative to speeches, writing speeches, uh, using the same essay approach that mm -hmm. Adam has uh, gone through uh, could work with the addition of continuous reference to the audience and using the right. call to action um, that could actually work. So it's it's no there's no need to panic. Yeah. That's yeah. So kind of yeah, it's it's not that there's no distinction for in, indeed, but. The distinction is just in the voicing, you know. It's it's, it's going to be a bit more personal since you are making a speech. You know, it's you are the person talking to somebody else, mm -hmm. so you can ad adapt the first person. A speech would be strange without the first person, right? It wouldn't sound like a real speech. And yeah. The reference to the audience, as as Gavin mentioned, that's important. But apart from that, it's basically similar. So that, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the so, so more use of yeah, the inclusive pronouns. So I think they could just jot down some of the things that could be used to just make that difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but Panda still had still maintain the same kind of flow we would see in a, in a persuasive in a regular persuasive piece. Yeah. Exactly. Just that the audience is a bit more pronounced than. The whole thing is more personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Nice speech. Nice speech. So it sounds like a realistic speech as well. So one that you could hear at a board meeting of sorts. Mm -hmm. And I think too, it's just like important to remember between the time and the amount of words that you have. Like this is thirty-five minutes and two hundred and eighty-eight words, so it literally can't be too much more than this in terms of length whether it's length of time and length of words. And um, my language could have been a little more speechy, if you want to say, but that mm -hmm. was a little bit beyond my realistic reach because I say after you've produced a story just before this, after you have rearranged, if you saw the um, question for section B that was with this, it had some doing, and then it was a letter, that one. And then you've produced a summary before that. By the time you get here, realistically speaking, this is a lot of what you might be able to manage. And I, I do like to set those expectations correctly because when I hear people run out of time on the exam, I expect that they've been trying to do something that's a little bit out of reach. Like it sounded good in, in theory, but then when you actually get there to the day, you know. But each of you individually would know yourselves. You know where you can reach, what's easy for you. A lot of y'all are probably smarter than me and like literally in school getting ready for this type of thing. So it might be easy for you to reach for a different voice or different language, vocabulary, sentence structure, whatever the case is. And your writing comes out different or better, that's good. But I just want to make sure that I'm giving 
real people, real tools that they can use under real exam conditions and come away with a real good pass, if you will. A so, real grade one. Yeah. That's what's up. And again, on on my um, exam, I didn't do any writing level greater than what you see here. And I really did get that distinction because I feel like practically your examiner would have to be wicked to tell you that this is somehow not good enough when you literally hit all of the um, all of the pointers that they had and you got the job done. So that's important. It doesn't have to be anything way beyond this and like fancy and I don't even know how many more ways you could make this more than it is, but that's mm. important to remember. Yeah, it's 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 just a uh, in in my estimation, it I I this could get full marks. It's a it's a, it's a perfect speech. You 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 hit all the points without error, as far as I I can see, and um. The vocabulary is on point. Yeah. The, the voicing is on point. The audience is remembered throughout the whole speech. So, I mean, if anybody complains about any aspect of this, it's just nitpicking. It's just being picky. It's, it's a good speech. That's all. Yeah. Again, I feel like in terms of checking for what they're actually checking for, there are not a lot of ways that this can be wrong. Like, look, here we have incompetence and how you don't get marks. So this doesn't suggest, in my opinion, an inability to manage vital features of the argument, an inability to organize the details, frequent and accurate use of language, insufficient information presented, or even a total inability to do all of those things above. So, you know, literally, if they're being fair, they can't give you into the incompetent zone for that attempt. And frankly, I feel like if you looked over this or you had this in mind, you would quickly reach the... This has got to be somewhere in the superiority zone because mm -hmm. that felt like very good management of the argument and the content and so on. So there's not that much to be afraid of. I think the question is just being aware before the moment is upon you of all the things that you're trying to get done. And I think that at that point, especially with practice, you would be able to manage in the actual moment what you're trying to get done. It's, it's not... Um, rocket science or as my friend says rocket surgery you basically mm -hmm. just want to get some simple pointers hit collect these marks here at least at this level and you should be good to go right so back to the speech tab itself which we've all seen a bunch of times but yeah mm -hmm. yeah pretty good speech and speaking of the the management of expectations, you know, ensure mm -hmm. that in the exam you're keeping tabs on the time, keeping track, and you adjust your expect adjust expectation to time. So if you hit section D and you have 20 minutes left, you will not be able to crank out a nice fat intro, three solid points, and a good conclusion. What you go you want, you want to show CSEC that you're still able, still able to write. And I would say it's better to flesh out, um, flesh out a couple of points. If you even say you know a two paragraph, a two point essay instead of a three point essay, so that way you can still get from beginning to end without. W what you want to avoid the worst case scenario is the time runs out and you're in the middle of a paragraph, not done. That's what you mm -hmm. want to avoid. So it's better to write something that's on the shorter end, but still complete. So if you find that you're running out of time and you're you're really you're hard pressed to to, to finish it up, you're, you're you have one section left and you only have 15, 20 minutes. Maybe something went horribly wrong with this story. Then just decide, all right, I'm gonna aim for 250 words and I'm gonna just do two points instead of three. My intro is gonna just have a hook and my thesis and move on. So mm -hmm. simplify. But do not simplify each part of your structure, but do not eliminate any part of the structure. That's where you get into trouble, right? It's better to write, a, for example, a simple story that's also correct than you write a perfect half story because you're going to lose marks, right? Yeah. So adjust to time. Best case scenario is 
you keep on top of the time and you have time to review but you never know what's going to happen exam pressure can create all kind of unpredictabilities agreed that's true i mean when <laughs> when i did this exam for one thing i didn't have a watch obviously we didn't have phones there was no clock in the room so i decided to just panic and speed write everything and then when i reached just about to the beginning of the story the lady was like hey we have half an hour left and i literally sat back in that chair and i breathed because i'm like oh okay i have time to write this story now so it could go either way you could either panic and run out of time or you could panic and finish way ahead of time at about so you had half 15, an hour left when i got to the end of that exam i had about 15 full minutes to just sit and okay. darken up the lines fix spelling punctuation i think so, she left the narrative writing for last um yes i did i did um summary first then the section b i jumped to this and then narrative writing because i wasn't so sure about my powers to create i'm not i i think i'm not as good as at summary writing and so on because another thing to remember is that you have four sections in here right and two of them require you to just rearrange things that are already written for you that's section a and section b and then c and d that's a story and this persuasive writing you have to write something out of your own mind so whichever one of those is easier for you to do you might want to do that first uh, it's up to you but that's an important thing to remember you know so i am a little bit stronger on just rearranging things cuz maybe i'm a good reader as well so the summary wasn't really a challenge for me um the section b was a tough question that year but it wasn't too much of a challenge and then i thought this might have been the next most challenging thing and i was prepared to have if i ran out of the time piece of a story missing as opposed to piece of something that was a little more factual maybe mm-hmm. so yeah it's easier to wind your way out of a story bind than out of a section a or b bind that's true so like you never want to finish a story with yeah. and then they all die at the end but like if you had to yeah you have yeah, those I, options <laughs> yeah it's either to to curtail the story than to just you know wrap up an essay suddenly because yeah. a story technically if if you're in a pinch you can find out a, a horrid way to end it that still sort of wraps it up Mm-hmm. might not be the best case but it's better than doing one point in a in an essay and then that's it time up yeah there's no coming back from that yeah all right all right so, all right yeah. uh, oh man it, it's been 5 hours and 20 minutes uh, it has been it has been it has been mm-hmm. so those here from the beginning man your soldiers we have one last little thing the pdf no uh pdf that was sent we're just going to speed 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 read that and then call it yeah yeah i do wish i would have been able to stay completely to the end but as 2 o'clock is approaching i have a few things that i need to do before business hours close yeah. so sorry to leave you guys i'd have loved to see what is coming yeah. next pdf style but yeah yeah Good. thanks for your great great work panda Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to contribute. I hope everybody has a more restful time preparing for the exam than they would have otherwise. At least you know what's coming and we've talked about it a lot, so you have a lot of um content to consider. Whatever you do is up to you on the day, but I like to feel that at least you had what it took to make it happen. Mm-hmm. All right. So Panda, we'll see you in one of your videos or lives or community posts or something yeah or something probably before exams yeah, yeah. i keep promising people things in the comments and i'm not sure i'm going to finish them all so <laughs> we'll have uh, to see yeah But, yeah. yeah all right okay so until next time folks you keep well study sleep that's important too you have all the information on exam day and you just burned out you don't want that either and um i think you got this all right So Adam thanks for having me. Gavin thanks for your contributions. I'll see you guys. Like what's been done. Thank you. Take it easy. All right. So Panda's left the chat. We're going to speed run 
one last PDF and then we're going to call it because I know we're all reaching, if not a limit, we're reaching something. <laughs> we're reaching something. Uh, all right, let me see. Uh, bam. And it seems my internet connection is reaching something as well because I've been having a few few issues luckily i'm not the only one in here so when i crash for a minute or two you know the life can go on all right let me share the pdf um, all right so this is the last thing we're going to be looking at all right, close this section all right, it looks pretty clear to me. So this question, do we have the question? Okay. Uh, the use of, okay, so is it the same question, Gavin, that the, the previous student answered? Yeah, it's the same question. All right. All right. Enable scrolling. All right, let's see. You want to read this one or you, you want me to take it? You may go ahead, man. Oh, man. man. <laughs> all right, all right. Let, me, let me go. Let me go. Take it, man. Take yes. it. <laughs> all, right. all right. Who does use social media these days? Social media has become the cornerstone of modern communication, especially amongst young people. Given its prevalence, I believe that it is important to us whether it is at all harmful to our youth i firmly believe that social media is negatively impacting the lives of young people there are many reasons that can be used to support my stance including but not limited to the detrimental effects effects of social media education on the education of young people the plethora of mental disorders associated with social media use and the fact that social media exposes young people to unhealthy habits and idolizes them. I will now expand on the aforementioned points. Um, can we just look at the introductory paragraph and see yeah. what went well with it and what could have been eliminated? Honestly, this, in general, this is a solid intro. Okay. It's a solid intro. So nice good with the... This was done under exam conditions. No. Yeah, man. This is an this is an advanced writer. Um, this is one of your kids or one of your colleagues' kids. Yeah, this is one of my kids. Yeah, man. This is a, a good writer, man. Good writer. We have the nice, not overdone, not you know, not not too forceful. We have a rhetorical question that's connected to the topic. Who doesn't use social media these days? And then we get to the statement, social media has become the cornerstone, nice vocabulary of modern communication, especially. And we, we get to the specific group uh, that the question is looking at. So we see the movement from general to specific, which is good. Exactly. Exactly. We see prevalence, that's a nice word. I believe it's important to ask, to ask whether it is at all harmful to our youth. I firmly believe that social media. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plethora, detrimental. You can see some high level vocabs in this intro. Um, yeah. The only part that I'm a little bit confused about is here the, the unhealthy yeah. habits and idolizes them. Yeah, the un idolizes them could be eliminated because it takes yeah. away from the consistency um of that particular sentence um mm -hmm. so plethora of mental health, mental disorders associated with social media you know that social media exposes young people to unhealthy habits so we know so they're exposed to them and they idolize these habits but um the expression here might be a bit faulty so it could be corrected by simply eliminating the and idolizing yeah because yeah. and the sentence is, is complete enough even without that yes and the last yeah. sentence there could be eliminated too yeah we don't, yeah no need for that because obviously yeah. that that's what an essay is going to do yeah but apart from that nice intro man that's a nice intro all right and then not, your not favorite much to complain about your favorite <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah all right to begin with 
social media has been proven to cause a decline in academic performance amongst the youth. A study published by the International Institute of Child Development, IICD, in 2021 showed that the quick burst of dopamine, the happiness chemical that social media provides, caused children from the ages of 12 to 17 to have a drastic 40% decrease in attention span and focus. The study also showed that this decrease in focus also translates to the classroom, I think, expression issue. Young people from the ages of 13 to 15 who used social media regularly showed a 20% decrease in memorization of subject matter and a shocking 10% um, difference in examination results when compared to pupils who did not regularly use social media. Yo, this is a wicked paragraph, man. Wicked, big, big paragraph. Big, big paragraph. Look at the devices. Look at that 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 inclusion of evidence with the source of the evidence. Even in, in, in the brackets, the well, IICD. Nice. And it sounds like a realistic and, and credible source. Exactly. Exactly. I, am, I would almost look it up because it sounds real. <laughs> and we have a date attached, more credibility and recency of the facts. Yeah. And then the dopamine with the parent parenthetical explanation. That that's nice stuff, man. That's an advanced and little thing there. There's one or one little place where the expression is weird, but it's, yeah. it's generally a nice yeah. paragraph. Yeah, the focus also translates to the classroom there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I would probably um what would I say? I, I get the idea, you know. It's a nice yeah. idea. Um is is transferred over to the classroom maybe. Yeah, yeah, transferred into the learning teaching and learning environment or space classroom. yeah 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 and i like i like the two there are several uses of there are several devices here you now because they have the contrast comparing yes. um basically the the, the oh, mindset you. of you know those who overuse versus those who do, don't overuse so yes. that's a nice contrast plus statistics Nice one. Exactly. All right, fair enough. Um, moreover, cool. social media usage can be linked to men, many mental issue, issues. Common examples of such disorders are anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, insomnia, anorexia, and many more. In an interview from 2022, a teenage girl named Marjorie Thompson relayed her struggles with mental health as a result of overusing social media. She described her addiction as overwhelming and inescapable. She also described her battle with anorexia and is quoted as saying, I would always scroll on Instagram and see all the pretty models and I would feel less than. So I stopped eating to get skinnier, but it was never enough. Is social media really worth the mental anguish it inflicts on our young people? All right. We, we need a question mark there for that rhetorical mm -hmm. question. Yeah. One, this writer is a star writer, Gavin. Not, not joking. Raphael, Raphael, big up Raphael. Yeah, man. Big up Raphael, man. Like the, 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 the myriad of devices squeezed into the um, coherent and also concise paragraphs really... Yeah really advanced stuff because then we have the, the um what do you call that it's been five hours um anecdote okay yeah the anecdote and then we use quotation as well as opposed to just reporting um the yeah. event yeah and the yeah. use of the emotive language so struggles yeah. inescapable overwhelming yeah Appeal to emotion. Yeah, anguish and inflicts. So, so we're yeah. seeing... Good vocabulary. Yeah. Yeah, man. Maintenance yeah. of the, uh, the group of persons who, um, who are impacted by um, this particular uh, phenomenon. All right? Yeah. All right. So, Very good so far. Finally, social media influences young people young people to partake in unhealthy practices and lifestyles. Let's talk about vaping. 
it has become the epidemic facing schools across the world. This matter is not aided by the prevalence. This matter is not aided by the prevalence of vape culture on social media. Is it not? Uh, this matter oh, is. No, is no. I, I I understand the the the, the, okay. the attempt. So it, it, they're saying you know this this vape culture doesn't help the issue. In yeah. that it only makes it worse. But how it is worded, it, it's a it's a bit ambiguous, a bit confusing. Okay. Yeah. An anonymous survey done by the Pediatric Drug Use Administration showed that 70% 70, 70 of teens aged 13 to 18 have used vape and that a shocking 50 or 80% of those respondents find, is it right? Mm, had vaped repeatedly. Had vaped, had vaped repeatedly. Thank you. Concerningly, about eighty percent, eighty percent of those who said they had vaped consistently had said they first heard of vaping on social media sites. This is not an isolated issue. Social media is allowed on healthy, I guess, practices such as alcoholism, smoking and others to be platformed to young audiences. Vaping mm. has been linked to a variety of issues such as lung cancer and asthma. But since it is a relatively new invention, there is not much that is currently known about its effects, about its effects or something. About its effects, yeah, I guess. Time can only tell the repercussions that this will have on our young people but if we want to avoid that outcome we must push for the regulation of of this of this uh, of such uh, such content on social media sites i think she had used two words for getting to eliminate okay uh, okay all right um an another great paragraph a few things I might nitpick about and we are able to nitpick because the writing is so yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, to clear up, uh, where was it? Uh, yeah. the one was it? The, there's a confusing part, right? This matter is not, this matter is not just at the top of. Yeah. Topic. So what I would say is this matter is exacerbated by yeah. something, something. Yeah, that's why I would say that. Is it the accessibility or the prevalence? Of, well, the accessibility, uh, yeah, yeah. prevalence, yeah, it, the accessibility of um, social sites or platforms. Yeah, that's how I would do that, just so it's clear. And there was one more thing. Uh, what do you feel about the use of this many percentages? Overkill, or I think it's okay. I, I think it could have reduced the number of statistical uh, data used because I, I think the arguments are already convinced. Well, this argument is already convincing. So there's no need to um, punctuate that or to insert any, any, any more of that particular form of persuasive yeah. Thing. Maybe it could yeah. vary then. If you use statistics, you could actually use some other type of... Or okay. even numbers. Or Just numbers, numbers you know. Uh, give me a round number, you know. Over 50,000, whatever, yes. whatever. So you can stick to the quantitative statistics, but not necessarily yeah. percentages. You can use yeah. fractions, a third, a half. Yeah. So various ways of, of saying the same thing would, would be better. That makes sense makes sense um, there's one other thing shocking shockingly such a such a standout word i wouldn't use it twice yeah i, I might instead say um, alarmingly or something else yeah. that, that's a synonym but yeah in general really really good stuff Example. not much to complain about uh, to conclude social media has been shown to be detrimental to the lives of our youths it hinders the educational the educational development mental well-being and physical health of young people as a result of this i believe social media sites should be placed under more stringent restriction mm. um, of what can appear 
because of what can appear on these platforms. If we want to see change on this issue, we must petition our policymakers and our legislative representatives. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this so, is a good asset to end the stream, man. <laughs> yeah. So they, they don't issue I have with this because I'm seeing here. So the use of the connective to suggest that uh, this is a final paragraph. This is the conclusion. This is a summary of um, ideas earlier presented. So he did that. There is representation of his stance and the reasons for his position. And that there's a call to action. So if we want to see change on this issue, we must petition our policymakers and our legislative um, representatives. I'm here wondering if he needs to clearly identify what we should petition them for. Is it mentioned in a previous sentence where he said that more stringent restrictions should be um, enforced? Mm. But under exam condition, I think this is a commendable effort. More than commendable. Yeah, man, this is a, this is a great one essay because this isn't, isn't take home work. The student would have had to um, come up with all of this vocabulary, use the very All right, are are we are we live? Yes. All right. Sorry about that. I dropped dropped out for a few. This is a a top class essay under exam conditions for sure. I yeah man, that's a good writer. Good writer there. Good writer. Yeah. Very very. Good. There is no um, concern or issues. From the student audience, then I could think we could wrap up. Uh, 
Okay, it's it's time to. We'll have to end the live. All right, guys, thanks for coming out. All right. Gavin, are you still here? You can hear me now? I feel like I'm alone. In this you know, moment. I'm still here. I mean, I'm still here, and they can hear you too. I think they okay, can, okay. can hear um, it, it, One student had a question, uh, I think, concerning the use of anecdotes hmm. in the... So anecdotes can be used and they can be fabricated. All right. So any technique that you use, the statistical data or not. So you, you wouldn't have an arsenal of um, any facts um, right. in the exam because you don't know exactly what you'll be asked to write. However, so you could actually make, make up these details. All right. So you could create the stats, uh, create um, anecdotes, even quotes, quotations uh, from experts. Yeah, right, just, make, just make them realistic. Realistic, exactly. The only thing that you need to do is ensure yeah. that they are realistic. All right? Yeah. So, I mean, so try to ensure that you have a variety of persuasive techniques in your response. Uh, your teacher would have exposed you to these. Um, so one strategy is to ensure that each paragraph features at least one text structure. So cause and effect, problem, solution, contrast, com comparison, contrast, uh, description, meaning giving examples or uh, explaining how something actually looks or works. So you know the different uh, text structures. Uh, your, again, your teacher would have exposed you to these. So ensure that you have at least one text structure in each paragraph, as well as I would say at least two persuasive techniques, whether loaded words, uh statistical data expert appeal uh, uh, or so on all right yeah very very good advice sure so you say yeah you have that variety yeah. all right let's call it before my computer blows up because that's the next step <laughs> <laughs> oh man i don't know tonight has just not been the night uh, but Jeez. but we, we've covered some good ground. We got a lot done. I think we, we went through six samples, two of mine, two of pandas, and two from your from your students. So that's a lot of work. That it's it has been, I think, almost productive live in terms of the number of writings we've looked at. Yeah. So Gavin, thanks for being here, man. Thanks for spending the hours with us. Yes, man. Uh, the students are still here. Yes, <laughs> that's what I found impressive to you. Yeah. yeah, it's still around. Right, so yeah, best yeah. wishes to you guys. Uh, you will conquer this. So you've been armed with the necessary to acquit yourselves creditably. So we know that you will go for it and conquer. All right. So best yeah, wishes. All right. I'm going to get two hours sleep and get up for work. So you see these sacrifices, I better get great ones, no yeah. twos. <laughs> Uh, yeah, really. All right, people, peace out. Peace out, peace out. All right.